Hello and welcome everybody to Nice the Last Call. My name is Derek Melinda and I uh, am live from the studio and I'm here joined by the man, the myth, the legend himself. It's Bob. Hey Bob, how's it going? Flexing on him. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully uh, everyone is doing really, really well tonight. Um, again, we are still figuring out our studio look. We're still sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, mastering the well, has ev mastering the, uh, the, the lighting and has all this other stuff. Has everyone seen the studio yet? Oh, maybe they haven't. Because the last time you showed it was the was the Bob's birthday bash, which you had to yeah. be a Discord member, uh, a Patreon member to see. John Smith wants us to prove that we're, oh, ah! oh, 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 I turned off the light. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. There we go. <laughs> Just dialing this in while we're live because that's what people do. Um, yeah, all right, there we go. Here we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Apps, people. There we go. I just wanted to be at 15%. All right. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that's right. I think a lot of people have not seen this studio. Again, for the, for the patrons, the Bob's Birthday Bash, everyone got a sneak peek. But this is what uh, Derek and the, and the Knights have been working on for a bit. Yeah, so if you haven't seen us before here live, our patrons have for the last, you know, month or two months while we've yep. been putting this together. Um, but this is the Studio 0 0.9. I mean, I mean like, it's like, we are ready to run. We are definitely ready to start. Again, yeah. there's, a couple, there's a couple additional lighting things. And then we can start tweaking it, making it awesome, right. really awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and some sound stuff that we still yes. want to figure out. Yes, yes, yes. But for the most part, you know, we're, we're pretty happy about this. And of course, the main thing that we're gonna be doing with this space um, is that, you know, and that, look how dark that shot is. That's I know, great. that's what I was talking about. I know. One of the main things that we're doing with this space is we're gonna be playing more actual plays. We're gonna be playing uh, with myself, Bob, uh, Smith, and we're also gonna be bringing back uh, some of our old friends. Uh, we're gonna be bringing back Nick. That's right, Nick is gonna be here. We got our buddy We got our Dirt. buddy, buddy Dirt, who's gonna be yeah. joining us, and we're hoping that you know, we might be able to get some additional, some of our other friends on here. Um, you know, one of the one of the goals that I've had, Bob, is to try to improve some of the diversity on the show. You know, we've just always been a bunch of white guys. You know, so I got more white guys. <laughs> and you do. Too. You do. I have a ton of white guys. <laughs> right. Um, and so, at the very least, you know, I do. You know, I do have. I do have some. I do have some friends yeah, that are not yeah, just white men. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have, so I had more in the volleyball world, but the. TTRPG world. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I don't have a lot of. Plus, it's just mostly my family I bring to the show. Right. Exactly. So, um, but yeah. Um, there we go. Uh, uh, we're excited to be here. Now, this is stream is going to be a little strange um, because it is our hundredth live stream, and it, it's not. No, not not exactly. It's not exactly one hundred. It's not exactly. It's not officially one hundred. It's like a hundred minus APs. Cor yes, <laughs> correct. Exactly. Whenever we did our quest for the frozen flames or rise of the rune lords, um, those were live streams, but we didn't really count them as live streams because it was messed up. It had been complicated for the number counting system. But this is our hundredth live stream of you know me talking to you and hanging out with the chat. So information yeah, right. or reviews, stuff like that we've done that uh, were live. Exactly. Now, ser now, serious whimsy is asking: Is there beer? Uh, well, no, we got. I mean, we have beer. We do have beer, but we have some scotch. Yeah, we have some scotch. Cheers right, to one hundred. Cheers. Mm. So much better to drink casually than take shots during my birthday stream. Yeah, if you miss the if you miss the Bob's <laughs> birthday bash because you're not a patron, you missed the. I mean, there's actually a debate, Bob, and Smith said this. I want to know what you think. Smith was think saying we should, assuming it's not too raucous. It was pretty raucous. Is that we should make the Bob's birthday bash public? Uh, I'd have to really go back and check that we didn't like. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, we were drinking, which is fine, but I was just trying to think of what we said during the during the stream. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, a wing break, a cake break. Yeah, there, it, it was not the most professional stream of all time by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I, I do agree with Smith when he said that it really. I mean, like, sure, we were live streaming. But it really highlighted what the studio is all about, right? Which is the sense that five, ten minutes in, that all just disappeared. Correct. And it was like it, it was like we were just playing around the table. And actually, I think it re resembles a lot of like what yours at home table might look like on a Friday night. I got the wings delivered, a couple drinks, and having a good time with our buddies. And uh, and we glad we got to show that to you. And, and it, it was a little raucous, so we'll, I'll, I'd have to listen to it again just to double check. Fair enough. <laughs> and you know, it, that's actually. A very nice segue, Bob, because you said, 
you know, we had wings getting delivered. Um, we were stopping. People were stopping to go to the bathroom. I, uh, that's a normal for me. I'm, I'm, I'm always on my way to the bathroom. Okay. Um, and, you know, and, 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 you know, certainly once I had a few drinks, me too, right? Like I, I was, and, and this, and this is legitimate, but I was, I was, I was playing to you. Yeah. Or to Jeff or to Smith, I wasn't necessarily playing to the camera, and the I reason they, I think they could feel that. And well, and one of the I reasons, could feel it, right? And one of the reasons I bring that up is because and this is kind of a segue going back to the beginning. Yeah, one of the very early things that people said really brought them into Nice the Last Call was the feeling of it being very genuine. Yes, of the feeling of it being very um, authentic. There's nothing more genuine than me attempting to run up a sword and then getting stabbed by Derek. <laughs> like I'm some kind of anime character. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, going back to the original days of Rise of the Room Lords, you know, I was sitting down to play Pathfinder 2 with a group of players who had never played Pathfinder 2 before. This is correct. And Bob had only played D &D. three, four sessions of 5th edition. Uh, however long it took to get through um, Sun the Citadel. Right, well, you know what? So, here, let's... For people who don't yeah. know, what is KO? How did KOLC start? How did KOLC start? This yes. is a great story, and and you know, I was actually just telling this. I missed the beer of the week. That was some good times back in the day, beer of the week. I'd like to, in some capacity, I want to bring back beer of the week. It yeah. is in our logo. It is a part of the KOLC uh, zeitgeist. Yep. Um, we've kind of we we drink a lot more wine and spirits these days. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the wine has been really nice, and again. <laughs> I just kind of got off beer for a little bit, but if it was a, a different beer every week, I think that could be pretty interesting. And, and as long as we kept it to maybe like a beer, because I, I I would start to get a little loose sometimes. <laughs> right. We got a uh, we got a, <laughs> we got a super chat from our friend uh, Vin there. Set the birthday bash free. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with um, KC. Uh, very fun, awesome, probably worth the scrub just in case. I don't disagree. So with that. I'll probably download it. Take a look through it. I might, I might edit out like the wing breaks, just to keep it going. But you know, who knows? Who cares? Whatever. I just want to double check that. Why we haven't? We've silly. never, we've never cared about the quality of our content. Why start now, right? Well, what's funny is even though it was uh, goofy, the, the quality was great. <laughs> like the cameras are good, the mics are good, the studio looks great. Uh, right. As you guys are probably seeing, if you guys are seeing this on the VOD or, or obviously our patrons are always always watching. But if you're new and you're not a subscriber, like and subscribe below, and uh, follow us. But this is our studio. This is what we're gonna be playing in. So I think people are really excited to see this space. I mean, I, I know so I I know I certainly am. And I and I, you know, again, Bob and I have pretty much, you know, Aaron came in and helped us out a couple of times, but really this has just been a level a uh, labor of love from Bob and I. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, uh, from the table that we're playing on to all yeah, of these walls that you, you see around you and I mean, go, can you return to that big shot? Yeah, it's so a little guys, dark. It's a little guys, dark. I know it's dark, but you guys can you can't really tell in this shot, but the front of the table is ten feet long. <laughs> it's quite the it's quite the massive table. It so is. It, it was fun to build. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so, uh, look, uh, Mark is asking first time catching you guys live. What is happening today? Well, Mark, it's a little bit of a celebration stream. We're probably going to just answer questions and maybe get into some philosophical conversations. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to be sort of walking um, everyone through a sort of a history of Nice the Last Call and kind of talking about Bob's journey because. What you've seen on this channel is minus three sessions of D&D 5th edition that we played before we started is your RPG journey, right? Yeah, literally, if I'm not playing on the stream, it's I'm playing with the patrons in Northern Reaches or with the patrons in uh, like community games and stuff like that. So if, if you were part of the Discord or part of the Patreon, you've seen me basically go from just a player to now a GM trying to GM, so. <laughs> Uh, uh, we got a super chat from our other good friend, Damian Williams, who uh, advised us that Vin is never super chatting with our best interests in mind. It is in his name title. It is in, so he is a self-confessed cynic, so that is very good. Um, no, I, I, I think it'll be fun. Again, I would not listen, if Vin and Smith both agree to something, you know that that is something to really that is interesting. To consider. <laughs> that is interesting. Um, so b before we get into that, let's talk for those people who may not know uh, the, all of the details. The history. With the deets. Because I was actually just telling this to somebody the other day. I was telling you to GM Scott oh. today about um, sort of the secret. Oh. Man, all of a sudden, thanks, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> so, sort of the secret. Beer fund, beer yeah. fund. <laughs> Thank you very much, Henry. Appreciate that. Um, very, very generous. Thank you so much for that. 
And uh, we got another super chat from Self Confessed Cynical. I only, only, I only super chat for my own self interest. All right, fair enough. Now they're, now they're super chat yelling at each other through super chats. So not right. even about the channel anymore. Listen, it's not even about the channel anymore. <laughs> thank you, Vin, and thank you, Henry, for that very generous twenty dollars. Yes. Um, we will certainly put it to good use. I, I, I again, I think beer of the week was faux fun. I think a lot of people liked it. I think I enjoyed it. Well, and, a different beer, uh, trying different flavors, going uh or yay or nay. It, well, it was fun. Yeah, and the other thing is too is not to be like flexing on them. But we have a big enough base now that, like, you know, the very first thing that we ever got sent by anybody. That's right. Was by Vlax. from Vlax, yep. Stephen, who sent us some local beer. Yep. And um, we got to enjoy it, and it was like, you know, uh, um, uh, it was it was it was a a really cool treat. And now that we have such a bigger group, right, we could probably even enjoy that even more because we yep. get more people sending us stuff. Absolutely. And I mean, you guys might think I'm dark, but if you put this light on, it will be the sun. So you know, <laughs> this is this is a nice tone for my pale complexion. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Vin, we're 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 still playing around with things. The, the background lighting on Bob's is a different light yeah. than the background lighting on mine. So we're just playing around with. Yeah, I wonder if like that light was. I don't know, because or t is that the light that needs to be turned up to hit my face? Because this light's the same light that's lighting both of us. Correct. So cool. cool. But this is where the camera settings come in. Uh, um, and we were talking about this before we went was, live, which is I really want to upgrade the cameras because it gives me more control. I can dial in exactly what yeah. um, you know what's going on with going on with this. Claude Corp just uh, just did a shout out to the last scene of Bob in the Rise of the Rune Lords. Uh, it was epic. <laughs> I felt it was. You know, I went out with a bang. <laughs> yeah, you know, Claude, Claude. You know what? That's thank you, Claude. We, we that is a great example. We're gonna get there because <laughs> I, I do want to quickly kind of walk through how we got to where we are today. Yes. Um. So, Bob and I uh, really weren't we're not friends. We are associates through a mutual friend. Right, which everybody knows is Matt the Cat. Matt, Matt Holloway. Matt Holloway, aka Burl, Burlington Veppen. Yep. So he. And uh, a handful of us love to play Magic, so uh, or, you know, Magic the Gathering. So I would invite my friends over, and we'd always buy an our guy. Derek come in, run house, because Derek's really, really good at Magic. So he would win the drafts or whatever we'd do. Or we'd go up to the studio, and we'd play at the studio well, and draft and stuff like that. So I knew you right. through association. Right. That's so, Matt's but, friend. But we, had, we'd, we played Magic together. Correct. We, we were not friends, but I was like... You come over to my house a couple times. Yes. Like, that's about right. it. Right. And we were friendly. Yeah, yeah, you know you my know, dad. Uh, right, yeah. Like, I, I met your dad. I met yeah. your family. Like, we had, we had had a good time. Yes. Now, now, remind me, who did... Rory. Rory. Okay. So, so Rory, which was... Um, Gore. Gore, the fighter. He goes... He was working out with me, and he's like, you watch Critical Role at all? I know you're into these like, games and, you know, role-playing games. I said, nah, I heard about it, but I don't know. He's like, you should watch it. Sorry, so I watched a couple of some. I'm like, this is really fun. Really entertaining. I'm really getting into this. I was like, I'm kind of getting in every episode. I'm kind of now was a hundred episodes back, so I'm like, never gonna catch up. Here. Was this was, was this campaign one or campaign two? Two, because okay. uh, by the time I started watching, it was already into two. Got it. So I was like, oh, this is really fun and exciting, and they seem like they're having a good time. Oh, they're rolling dice. They're building a character. This is fantastic. This is like, really good stuff. And I had known that Matt had played D and D with you. Right. You were his uh, his DM, and I was like, oh. Interesting. Maybe, maybe Rory. Maybe me and you, and we get in our guy. I'll ask Derek. I know this guy. He he he's done it. Maybe maybe he'll just run a game for me or a couple games. Just show me the ropes so I can learn. So then I can run the game for you. Right. So the original plan. Yes. Was you were going to learn the ropes for me. Yes. We were going to kick the tires around for yep. a little bit using Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition because yep. that's what they used on Critical Role, and conveniently, uh, at that time. I had, was in possession of a studio space. That's right. Which I had used to start my own photography business. I was a professional headshot shot photographer for all of about six months. <laughs> um, and then COVID happened and I got shut down. And even after I reopened, business was basically yeah. dead. So I had this whole huge space. Now, what's really funny about it is in the original studio, there were two tables. That's right. Which I gave to your cousin. No, you gave it to me. I gave to you. I gave one to, I was going to give one to my cousin. Okay. He said he couldn't take it, so I gave it to my dad. Got I it. took the other table and I cut it down to make a different table in my house. Got it. Okay. Well, that's... Reuse, re reduce, reuse, recycle. Right. Reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> but I had originally put those in there. And, you know, the studio space was pretty big. My old studio was big. Well, if I remember correctly, yeah. you would, I texted you or messaged you on Facebook and you're like, I could do it. I got this studio. You should just come up. Yep. And it was like, it's in the same city as I live. I'm like, I'll just roll by one day and just see this thing. And then I roll in, and you had these big tables set up 
with mics. And I was like, what do you do with these? And you're like, well, if I ever draft, I might film my draft, or we, you know, I set it up, we have eight persons, so we can do an eight person. Right, I MTV built I, yeah. I built that original table yep. to be able to, to, to handle a Magic the Gathering draft. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to start thinking of ways that I could diversify what I was using my studio for, because I wasn't getting anybody in. And I was like, okay, maybe I can rent it out to people yep. for podcasts or some, or even like a video podcast because I had all this equipment and I'd only ever done cameras. I'd never done anything with videos or cameras. And so you said, hey, can I come up and can we play D&D? &D? I said, sure. And we played uh, Sun the Citadel. Yeah, well, even before that, you I remember you taught me just how to... Uh like how you could like make something on the fly. And I remember you running me through like uh, if Elsa was like. Actually, no, no, you, you remember this? No, no, I remember. Wait. It was so like originally. Was, like, going on a road trip or something? Originally, <laughs> originally, you just wanted me to teach you how to play D&D. &D. I was gonna go on to play with Rory and them, my brother and all them. And then after I sort of showed you, we, we kind of did like a, I made like a quick, like. You're like, this is how easy it is. I, like like here, here's a D6. <laughs> if you roll high, it's good. If you roll low, it's yeah. bad. And now we're gonna play role playing games. Like that that's the only rule you need to know. You were like, what do you like? I'm like, I like Disney. You're like, all right, so Elsa's Elsa's got a mission for you. I was like, okay, well, I'm in. <laughs> like, what's right. Going and on? like Elsa was sending him on a mission to like the Ice Queen or yeah, something, something like that. Like Anyways, that. and I was just making it up and Bob was kind of you were I pretty hooked. I mean, I, I, that kind of stuff like really drove me. You're like, you're gonna go, and then I think I ran into bandits or something and whatever. Yeah. And then then you were like, you know what? I could run you through something. And I was like, okay, maybe you'll just run the game and I'll learn that way. Right. You'll learn kind of by osmosis. Yes. Um, and so we got together a crew of people, uh, which included uh, Rory, Rory, and my buddy Matt, R. and your buddy Matt R, yeah. who did not make it to the show. No, no, no. He just so, he was a baseball friend of mine. Right. So we played for about four weeks, maybe four sessions. Yeah, I can't remember how. Maybe long. five sessions, give or take, three or four sessions. And even Jeff was there for one, one or two sessions. Right. He was Gary the Great, which you guys might have seen at the Bob's birthday bash. Gary, uh, Jeff was was there for a session or maybe two. And he was like, D&D's not really my thing. Right. Until he was out. Pretty easy. <laughs> and we got to the end of Sunless Citadel, and you were like, that was great. Yeah, I can't I can't tell if it was great because, obviously Sunless Citadel is a great mission, but also like Derek makes it like so fun. I remember I had like this like hammer that like when I crit critted, like it would also cross like a fireball like around me. I was like, this was the coolest thing ever. Right, obviously. Derek was, makes broken things. Right, yeah, obviously this was completely not something that's in the adventure. I also <laughs> sold the party a arrow of slaying for like 50 gold. It was from, awesome. From the mysterious merchant, um, you know, in town because I wanted to say, you know. Which, if you guys know some of the Citadel, spoiler alert, there's like this uh, little secret door to the left when you first walk in, after you get past the rats that kill everybody. But you go to the left and you go in this like temple room and then there's another door behind there that you're not really supposed to go to and there's some kind of big- Troll. Troll god. Well, you got this monster mini that was also awesome. And you put this big mini on and I'm like, this thing's gonna wreck us. And then Rory on goes, I have this one arrow I bought. I've been saving it. You gotta use it. <laughs> like you gotta use it. And he hit with it. I think he like missed, but it still like did a bunch of damage. No, yeah, oh, no, it was he, awesome. he hit with it. It made it save, but it still did so much damage that the, the the big troll died. But again, it was a greater arrow of slaying. But I was playing fifth edition. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> like sell it for fifty gold. Like I would always just make whatever. I would always come up with cool items. I would just pull them out of the DMG, and then basically I'd be like, "How much money do you have?" Yeah. And then I'd be like, "Oh, okay. It's gonna cost you eighty percent of that." And like you just have to make a decision, and yeah. like everybody wanted to buy more healing potions, but it was like, or you could, you know, you could get these uh, really sweet, awesome, cool items, especially things that are consumable, like arrows of slaying. Anyways, Bob had a great time with that. Oh, it was so fun! And so afterwards, you were like, "We, okay, let's keep playing." Yeah, I kinda, if you're okay with it. I was kind of like, "That was fun." I don't know if I'm uh, good enough uh, to run my own thing, but that was a lot of fun. My crew seemed to have a good time, and. And I sort of joked you, I'm like, you know what you should do? Just turn these dang cameras on and we could film it. And then you go, I know you like D&D. &D. Did you like leveling up your character? Because if you like that, and I know your buddies all like math, you imagine leveling up your character and then every level you get to do something. Because in D&D &D, it was like every two or three levels. So right. now now we're going to say every level you're going to do something. I said, all right, let's do it. And right. you're like, I'm going to teach you guys Pathfinder. And, and kind of a, a side note to that, you were really into... MLB Showdown. Yes, which is a, a game by Wizards of the Coast. Right, but it's a card game. <laughs> it was, yeah. Uh, well, it was, but yeah. baseball. But you, you're pretty passionate about it. And you had a podcast. your own podcast. That's right. Bourbon Over Baseball. Yep, Bob. And, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Not a lot of uh, viewers, I imagine. Nah. 
Okay, but you were doing the podcasting thing, That's right? And I was making my own cards. We were, yeah. you know, with a couple other people from around the country. Yeah, and so you were already in this idea of like, hey, man, like this is fun. It's a fun thing to do. It, turn we, the mics on. Turn the cameras. Right. On. Turn the mics on. Turn the cameras on. You already have them. You literally already have them. Why don't we just do this? Mm -hmm. And this is where the infamous thing came up, which is I said, fine, we'll do it. Oh, what's take the over or under That's on right. uh, over or under on what ever getting one hundred subs? Yeah, I think and, I said twelve or twenty or something. Yeah, Bob. Like that. Bob took. I took the under. Bob took the under. I he, said, I look, I've been doing this. It ain't easy. <laughs> and I'm like, the only people who are gonna sub are my family. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I got a big family, but this is gonna be under. <laughs> right. So Bob, Bob massively took the under, and said, you know, there's no chance that we'll. Uh, but at least we're playing a game. That at least we're playing something we enjoy it, whether no one likes it or not, whatever. But what I didn't also factor in was one. Um, I guess, one, you're a very good, uh, talented uh, game master. And two, uh, your business was also dying, and so you had time on your hand to edit these videos and make them better. <laughs> right, so it was kind of right. I probably would normally have never said yes. <laughs> but because I was basically unemployed, my business was going nowhere, and I had nothing but time on my hands, I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. I, I guess I'll learn how to do all this. So I didn't know how to do any of this. I know. I didn't know how to edit videos, Premiere Pro, or anything. So I had to learn that all. But... We said, okay, well, we need a couple more people. Yep. Right? So we got your brother. Got my brother. Via the, via the call in. Yes, which was, was his kind of, own thing. <laughs> which was kind of rough. It was rough. And then we got our, our mutual friend, our buddy Matt Holloway. Yep. Who came in. And that was the original. And we had Dusty. For like half a second. So he came for session zero. Right. Which we found out like he couldn't do, he couldn't even play anymore. So he was like, well, then that was kind of worthless. So then we just had the crew that we had. We had Rory, we had uh, Matt, and we had my brother. Right. And, me, and that was it. And then. Billick, Burl, Go uh, Gore, and Asius. Right, and Asius. And Alchemist at <laughs> that time. <laughs> and then that, that first session yep. was episode one. Uh, Sam, uh, uh, Sandpoint? Uh, Welcome to Sandpoint. Welcome, yeah. Or whatever. Riser. And that was us just with like one camera and on our, the table. And just on the end of the table. And that's our most viewed video yep. of all time. And, you know, f that was sort of the beginning of your journey with Nice Last Call together, yes. you and I, but also to into role playing games. Absolutely. You know, so that was it. I mean, I started learning. And I'm like, this is even getting more fun. I mean, I already had fun with D&D. Now it's even more fun. We're playing this other game. I'm, I'm, um, I'm on the YouTubes, you know, so that's kind of fun and, and, and wacky, but also, like, I was really getting into my character. It was, well, I also hated it at the same time because I wasn't good at being an alchemist. I wanted to hit things, and, you know, Derek might be like, you should do this, but I'm like, no, no, I really want to be an alchemist. And you're like, okay, but your play style is, like, really into one thing. So I was had a lot of fun playing. It was a tough system to really get a handle on, uh, but I, it was able to let me do a little bit behind the scenes. I played a little bit of the one-shots, like, behind with... with uh, with my crew because of that, because I was able to sort of learn GMing. Right, and so that's kind of where I wanted to kind of go into this, is like, so for starters, um, you know, for st well, for starters, we're friends now, Vin. Well, yeah, we are friends now, though Reddit would tell me to stop being friends with Smith and Derek because they're just bad people for me. They bring, they bring me down. They bring, they, we bring him down. Um, and you know what, I don't, I don't know that they're wrong. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that I disagree with them. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is that, you know, um, still <laughs> is, you know, so it's been two and a half years, more or less. Yeah, I mean, we've even gone through, well, actually, it was kind of funny. We, so we started with that table, which was rough. And then you started really getting into it. You're like, yeah, I, I think I can maximize the angles of the table. So then you, you made this new table. And then I got to see some of the skills of you making tables, and I was like, well, I'm going to build my own table, like the Wormwood Gaming Table. Right. I'm going to put that in my house. So now I got this table at my house to do gaming at my house, and that was also super fun. We, we were doing different types of things. We had like a almost like that Fern podcast where we sat between to do recaps of Oh, the, it. Um, um, the one Rune Zach, Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rune, Rune Talk. talk. <laughs> it was like the Zach Galif now because we had like our Fern in, in the middle of us. We, did, we, we had the plant between us. Yes. So like, we <laughs> Oh, were, man, I forgot about that. Yeah, we did, we did stuff like that while we were like, okay, now we're renovating the studio. And then... Time for the studio to end. Time for now to move into this studio two years ago now. Yep. And we're like, okay, we're going to take the table and we're going to do it there. But then we're going to build this next table, uh, which is really fun to do because then I helped you build that one. Um, and, and yeah, then we're going to like, how are we going to maximize this angle? So it's been like this crazy process of like learning GMing, but also learning like woodworking, learning film, <laughs> uh, learning like all this stuff from Dirk. Dirk. Dirk just watches these videos and he like sucks it all in like a sponge. So I'm like learning it from him at the same time. So it's learning a lot uh, over this course, but, but, uh, 
But yeah, then I started playing Northern Reaches. I started jamming in the channel, learning Pathfinder 2. Again, we have a great, great Patreon. If you're not a part of it, again, probably look into joining that. But we, I, I remember asking the Patreon, which have, we have so many GMs there. Hey, can someone just play in my game? I'm gonna run a game. I have this one shot of D&D. &D. I'm gonna convert it to Pathfinder 2, play in my game. And then afterwards, you guys can give me tips. And they did. It was fantastic. They did a great job giving me tips. I felt I'm getting more comfortable as I was going. Right. So well, and, and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to say. You know, we, we were over your house the other day. You know, in your basement, and you know, you have that entire uh, shelf behind you of minis, of full of minis. Yeah, that's right. I have too many now. You you you've <laughs> gotten all these Kickstarters. You've got like your little micro dungeons. You've yep. got your easy D6 or tiny D6. Yeah. Right. You've got Pathfinder. You've got. Uh, D and D. &D. I got Warhammer. You got Warhammer. So like you know you've you've kind of become a gamer. Yes. Right. Like in the truest I mean, sense. I'm pl I, I played. I'm playing L five R with you. Uh, uh, I play Pathfinder. I played D and D. I played Blades in the Dark with some people on the channel. I've played uh, Dun Dungeon World with people. Dungeon on World on the channel. What was the game with the V? The uh, Norse Dark. Vason. Vason. I played Vason on the Bossen. channel with people. Vason. Vason. Uh, you know, I just would jump into random games with people and, and sort of and see where it went. And then anytime you're up for like you were talking about playing Avatar, I'm like, sign me up. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of like into it. Now, oh, sometimes we played what was that Starforged? What was the other? What was the space one? That uh, was? Iron Sworn Starforged. Yeah, I didn't really like that one, but I played it and tried it. But mm -hmm. the sci fi ones, even though I like Warhammer 40k. I don't know if I'm just not into the games as much, you know, the RPG games, but maybe I'm just playing the wrong games. Yeah, maybe know. it's possible. L5R um, is is pretty interesting. Well, it's, it's much different. And than that's kind of what I want to ask. And, and Claude, I saw your question. I'll get to that in a second. You know, we were playing Legend of the Five Rings not that long ago. We're going to be playing tomorrow. Yeah, we are. And in our first session of Legend of the Five Rings, it was this very kind of serious, intense meeting with your lord, your daimyo. And the daimyo was... Uh, his brother was missing, he suspected treachery on the behalf of the Crane family, and he was putting together some of his loyal retainers to send them on a mission to Otosan Uchi, the imperial capital, to find out what happened to his brother. And you, your character was not being sent because your character is this shaman, this mystic. Yeah, so the people that know me, uh, <laughs> they, I don't play this type of character. So again, not only am I playing a game that maybe isn't my most comfortable, because I did try L5R once before, uh, but then I got busy and also I have anxiety, so that's also fun. But uh, uh, I started playing it again and I said, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm kinda laying into this haunted background, taking over me a little bit, spellcaster guy, where I can sort of see maybe glimpses of the past and future and stuff like that. So I'm sort of this sh shaman type person. And, yep. and that's not my MO. So then, you know, now I'm playing a game that I'm not used to playing, a non-D20, and I'm playing a person I'm not used to playing, which, but it's actually pretty fun. <laughs> right, but that's the thing. It's like, yeah. when we first played Legend of the Five Rings ago, which wasn't that long ago, yes. you were kind of like, eh, if I'd rather play Pathfinder 2, yeah. I'll tap out. Like, yeah. you weren't, like, neat about it, but no. you were like, this just isn't my jam. Correct. And then we're playing Legend of the Five Rings. You're playing this the kind of, like, frail, in fact, your character literally has a bodyguard. I can't fight. A, a Yojimbo, you can't fight. Nope. And you're this kind of spiritual character. And then there was a great scene between Aaron's samurai and the Lord, played by me. This is where you're all the ammo references? And this is where we were talking. Oh, man, I was and, super into that scene. And ba, ba, you, were, into right, you were just, like, enraptured. And that's another thing, playing in person versus playing online, because we've been... We haven't had the studio built, and so we've been playing online for like the past year. But man, playing okay, we play Fridays in person. But man, I was like feeling everything he said. Like I was, I was into it. <laughs> and so, and so you've you know you've kind of gone from you know this, you know ah, Smash. Eh, this Legend of the Five Rings game like isn't smashing. for me. You still like Smash, but <laughs> it's like smashing. <laughs> you know, but I've seen you your 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 tastes and your you know um, what you enjoy. I'm not saying it's limited. In fact, it's broadened. Yes. But what do you think, why do you think that is? Uh, whew, I don't know. Um, part of me thinks that I enjoyed playing D&D &D and Pathfinder 2 the first few times with you because you're very good at like the storytelling aspect, which really draws me in. So it's like you're telling me this stuff that's happening in the world or this NPC has got this really interesting character. I remember, what's that goblin that we killed in someone's little Nebu? Uh, or Cobalt, Meepo. Meepo. We killed that guy so bad. <laughs> that was not meant to be, but you know, he he, he deserved it. Um, but uh, at the time, you know, it's like, okay, so now I'm listening to this amazing story, but I also need to find my comfortability. And at the time, I'm probably only comfortable with, I know I'm gonna run up and hit something real hard. Yeah. But now I'm like two years past that point. Now it's kind of like, 
I, I can do that, yeah. and I still get to do that in, in Abomination Vaults when we play Pathfinder 2. I was like, but can I do other things? Yeah. Can I explore my own space and do something uh, a little different? And and I think you're about to describe that that scene um, where I was doing something that you don't usually, I don't I don't usually do in D20, which was a scene sort of and like a cutscene almost. Right. So yeah, that was kind of fun. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Like Bob Bob's character uh, didn't you know his character failed a check. Yep. Uh, his character tried to make a, a courtesy roll to convince. I was trying to lie. <laughs> you were trying to make uh, use air, which is sort of to be shifty and deceitful, but to be very courteous and to basically be like you. You know, you have to send me, and you didn't f- succeed at the roll. Um, and so you kind of shifted into this like narrative sandbox mode of like, well, what do I need to do? And you, you know, you had this really clever idea of of sending your your lord a, a vision, a spiritual vision that night to convince him he's a kind of a superstitious man. That's why I got so close to him. <laughs> uh, to, to, you know, to, you must send, you know, you must send your Shugenja or yep. disaster will befall you. And it was very clever. Yes. And it was very uh, in theme with the, uh, with the, with the game. And I, I mean, it was a very proud moment for me to see you, you know, Bob the map attack yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I definitely grew from map attack because at that time, if I was playing, I'd be like, okay, I can just kill this guy. Can I <laughs> smash him over his head and convince him? No. I mean, case in point, like when we <laughs> first played on the Citadel and Meepo was bothering you, you killed him. He was really annoying. I mean, he would not be quiet. <laughs> but, yeah, so we're in this scene and you, I had a vision where, you know, the spirit had told me I needed to go on this mission. And I was like, okay, that's what I know. And I really trust the spirit. Now I failed the check. And the Lord's like, you're not going. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna go? And I thought I, I made a good spiel, but I rolled bad. So now I gotta figure it out. Right. So now I go look at my character sheet. I go, what kind of mechanics do I have on this? And I have one where I can make a little bit of weather or small little push, almost like a precedentation type thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a ritual at, at night before bed. And I'm gonna sense the spirits and I'm just gonna try to knock something over from this. Maybe it's maybe something that, you know, that he would get a sign for. Maybe in the morning, hope I roll well and, and he's convinced. And, that was happening. I was like, I left that session going, now that was something I've never done before. Right. You know, it wasn't just D20 roll and I smashed him. No, no, I had to like get into my character. What does my character do well? And how can he get to do what he needs to be able to do? He needs to go on this mission. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I have a follow-up to that, but I want I want to ask Claude's question. So Claude's asked the question. Okay. You, you've been GMing now. Yes. Uh, you've GMed Northern Reaches. You've played, you've GMed for uh, some of your friends with some other games, including D&D. Mm-hmm. So... Now that you've had some experience running games, do you like running games or playing games? Which do you prefer? It, it, just just from a straight preferable session, I, I would probably prefer to play. I prefer to like have this experience of leveling up and playing my character throughout. Uh, it's a little stressful probably to do that. Yeah, there, less stressful. But there is something that you just don't get from playing, and that is especially, now, we're not talking APs here. APs are whatever. They're fine. You could just run those. I could run them... As a player, as a GM, I don't really care. But when you're doing a sandbox one, like we did in Northern Reaches for Pathfinder, now I'm starting to de- play things, and I don't know what's going to happen. And they start to determine like where the campaign's going to go. And Northern Reaches obviously is, a, is a, to the nth degree because other campaigns are happening at the same time. Right. It's a it's a bunch of sandboxes <laughs> yeah. all in the same sandbox. Yeah. Right. right. So that it took it to the, to the next degree. But in terms of just where I was running, I was running the. This triune mystery, this this like cultist, they're trying to resurrect this god. And I was like, I don't know, it's the, you know he's a three headed god, and there's gonna be three things, and people started really get into it. What is this lore? What is this thing? I'm like, okay, well, I have to create this lore, and okay, okay, well, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna be able to solve this? Are they gonna be able to push this direction? Is it gonna affect other people's games, other other things that are happening in the world? What if they fail? Like, what is that gonna mean? And that was really fun in developing it, but it is it takes a little bit of time, a little it takes a little stress. You know, you're running games. Am I getting the rules right? Right. You know, all that kind of stuff. It's fine. I like jamming. I like jamming the sandbox. I think I would have fun. A lot of fun. I I actually would have a lot of fun jamming my group, which is just way super laid back. They're gonna get it wrong half the time, and that's fine because I'm gonna get it wrong half the time. But playing, I think, especially when Derek's jamming, is has been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think that's incredible. I mean, Vin asked, you know, how Northern Reaches is doing. It it's just starting. It's about to start. The um, the it's G- onboarding. <laughs> in my 
by my definition, started. People have characters and there's adventures. <laughs> I, I don't know they how. I have not played in any yet. All right, well, that, that's irrelevant. Most people play Pathfinder just to make characters, anyways. And that is happening. <laughs> and there's a lot of those characters, right? right. There's what, 50 characters? No, almost 70. <laughs> 70? Yeah. I don't even know. There's like 30 I... GMs and about 70 players. Okay, 70, 30 yeah. GMs, 70 players. So it's going pretty well. Um, but No, you... no, no uh, sorcerers. No sorcerers. No sorcerers. <laughs> the wildest thing. Um, and no um, seven summoners. No no druids. No druids. No no sorcerers. But like seven summoners. So yeah, yeah. I think I think the people in Northern Reaches are trying to make a statement this uh, this year. Um, <laughs> uh, roll for combat, Mister uh, Mister Glicker said. Uh, where are we going to eat during Origins? You're gonna have to show me around. Yeah, we know all the the hot spots, but when in doubt. You go to North Market. Um, yeah. That's the kind of go-to place. It's all they, you know. It's not open late, but it's got like a, it's got like twenty or thirty different small little yeah. um, kiosks inside of it. It's kind of like a food court, but it's like a really fancy food court, and it's like right across the street from the convention center. So yeah, like when in doubt, right across the street. When and in they doubt, have a really good chicken place in there too. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you just get like. Again, a lot of it you'd get to like go home and cook, but they have they have meals and stuff that you get there. But they got like cheeses and all sorts of stuff in there. It's pretty good. Ryan says no oracles. Mark wants to know if there's no. Any there's witches. one oracle. Oh, there's one oracle. Yeah, there's one oracle. Uh, what about witches? Yeah, I think there's a witch because I I think the only things are like, I'm, I think it's like druid, um, sorcerer, and ooh, there's one more. We got fighters. Oh, well, we got yeah. The fighters are number one. Eight, eight fighters, seven summoners. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, but some good says there's no sorcerers. Wow, sounds like a power giving equivalent of a race to the bottom. Kinda. I mean, kinda. Yeah. Like I think there's like this. Like nobody wants to be. Um, nobody wants to be seen as the min max munchkey power game. Oh, I would. <laughs> and uh, like I think part of the fun, a lot of barbarians. Well, but I also arts. think, but you know, and northern reaches. Oh, season, magus. That's the other one. Zero maguses. Okay, zero mega. Yeah. So the other, yeah. I think what northern reaches season one taught players. Was that, and, and, I, and I think I taught you this, right? Which is the game can be so much more than what's in the book. Absolutely. One of my favorite people to play with, even though, you know, it was, it was interesting, was the alchemist, was I Am Prophet. Uh, he was just the wackiest player. Not, 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 I don't mean that offensively uh, uh, to you, but uh, like he like took a ton of lore. So he would always come into these missions, and he was always like, "What do I know about it? Can I like scout it ahead? Can I go read some books in town at the library? Can I like figure something?" Like, oh, man, he's got every lore, and he's coming. He's dropping bombs. He's got all this stuff. He's like being this like super support character. I'm like, I'm like he's actually kind of sweet because I failed at this alchemist, and that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I mean, Northern Reaches, I think, made people feel comfortable. Because oh, they, he, this uh, Wolf Whipplestain, I think, just joined uh, the Patreon. Okay. So he might be the, the first sorcerer. Okay. A healing sorcerer, though, it's kind of sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it, I want, Whipplestain, are you divine or are you primal? Because either one can cast heal. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, a primal sorcerer that has a lot of healing is, is not bad. Although, divine sorcerer. So, Melissa good. has a good point. Uh, this actually, a lot of people thought this. They all were like, you know what? I'm going to do something that no one else is doing. I'm going to go summoner. And, like, it turns out everyone's going summoner. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, I guess we kind of screwed that up a little bit. But, but I, I'm a lot of people to change right now until the season actually starts. So, it's not, it's not hard to change the paperwork. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I think, I think something like Northern Reaches, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, well, okay, we could be honest, Bob. What? At the beginning of the season, you were putting together some dungeons and some events that I thought were really, really cool. And you were like responding. Oh, to this what was is uh, season one. Northern Reach. Yes, season, season one. one. Yeah, yeah. And you were really responding to what people were doing, and you were coming up with cool ideas. Weirdly, it was at the same time I was doing night school with you, <laughs> learning a lot. <laughs> um, and I remember, I mean, you know, what, he, Bob did some cool stuff that you can't really do in a home campaign. Yes. Because we're playing with a play base of 20, 30, 40 at the time. 20, 30, 40, now it's like 70 before we even begin. Um, 20, 30 players, Bob made a part of his dungeon, a puzzle that could only be solved if you had four dwarfs. Yes, so I, you came down this passageway, um, there, was, there was a secret passageway in, or you could have four humans, which I knew was gonna be the most, to get in the front door. That was like the easy way in. Go four humans, you can walk, or you can fight your way off the secret tunnel. That they found the secret tunnel, they got their way in. Then they get to this room and they see this monster treasure, and they're like, "Whoa, that's a lot of treasure!" And when they tried to enter, these big stone guardians came by, and they're like, nah, "Not happening." And they're like, "Well, what can we do?" I mean, what was funny is watching them try to figure this out. I remember. And to be clear, clear, you know, you would learn from night school and stuff. Yes. These stone guardians weren't like level appropriate. Oh no, no. Challenge. They were meant to stop them. The idea was that they should not be able to get in here unless they have four dwarfs to stand on these four tiles. 
And it was actually pretty cool. Some people were trying to like figure it out, like, what if I'm one dwarf, but I, I put my hands on all four tiles? And I was like, no, you need four dwarfs. It's the like magic, you know, this is, uh, you know, if they were able to figure out how to become a dwarf, like that was cool. So they figured out they couldn't go in this room. They couldn't break the lock on the back side. So they're like, all right, we're gonna go back to town. And then we're going to try to get four dwarfs to go back in and right. get that Which I love. I mean, yeah. I think that sounds like such a cool concept. But I, I love the way that you had built that. Yeah. Now, that being Where said. Where did it go? <laughs> that being said, I did join some of your games later in the season. Yes. And they were much more straightforward. They were very video game-like? They were very video game-like. They were just kind of a series of combats. Yes. Uh, with some interesting monsters and maybe something between. But for the most part, it felt like it was just like kind of like fight, corridor, fight, it's a corridor fight. So my question is why? Though why? my last fight, I did have this giant worm that would like slide in through other tunnels, almost like a cool video game, where like you had to like also get out of the way of that thing. It was like a hazard. So I thought that was a really cool element, but most of the time it was really just a fight. But, but why do you think that is? I think I got lazy. Okay. I think that uh, at that time, I think when I first started, I was just jamming. Like I was just barely helping Smith, uh, overlording the channel, taking all the data. And then Smith was like, all right, well, I'm doing Battle Cry and I'm doing the magazine stuff. So could you take over a little more of overlordship? And I said, yeah, I love doing the data. So that's, that's fun. And it takes, a, it takes some time. So I was like, okay, now I have to get, a, now I have to get like a thing together and run in two weeks. Okay, so I gotta get my sketchbook, start sketching this out. How is this gonna happen? What do I need to do that fits the story? I mean, because I mean, early yeah. on, you even had like you had custom riddles oh, I, and I, puzzles. They, they were all there in the in the early parts of oh, your yeah. cam campaign. Yeah. And so I was always, solved them way too quickly. Well, and, <laughs> way too quickly. But you know, but the reason I'm asking you this and, and asking why this happened to you is because I got to admit, and I think maybe a lot of us are, I, I've been guilty of that as well, where low level. Characters. I like low level too. It it feels much more like Indiana Jones, yeah. sort of like you're you're trying to pu you know put puzzles together and you're trying to like be really like clever and you're yeah. trying to come up with all these creative ways to solve problems and there's all these really strange weird things that you need to deal with. And in my own experience, by the time the party starts getting up there, you know, into the tens and the yeah. teens and the nope. nearing to twenty, you're kind of like, well, you know, they can just teleport and div divination and they could just basically like they could pass through a wall if they wanted yeah. to and so uh, I don't really feel about I, I don't feel like the exploration pillar or tier you know like the exploration is as big of a deal at higher level as it is at lower level yeah I mean I really really enjoy like I think it was like levels one through six we played I was like having the most fun and then once we got because I remember even throwing like a level nine monster uh, as like something they, they saw in the distance and by the end of the campaign, they're like level 20. I'm like, that was like a joke. Level nine's a joke. But like at the beginning, it was like, ooh, that is something crazy. Yeah. Like that is something that we, we, we I'm afraid to fight. And I'm like, that was so cool. Like tempting them. Like they like, they used this, they, the cultists had these special daggers. The daggers could open up portals. They opened up portal. They had to figure out which portal they were going to. If one was active or not active, they went in, took a peek. This thing was like waiting for them. They like almost killed the one guy. <laughs> the other guy jumped back through the portal. They're like, we're not messing with that today. And I was like, yeah. But I'm like, I don't know, later on I was more like, yeah, you're gonna go fight that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, and yes, I, KC, so exactly. Um, I, I kind of agree with you there, where you say that it, I think at higher level, you know, at low level, you don't have much on your character sheet, you know? Yeah. You got one feet, maybe, two feet. Um, it's pretty basic, you don't really have a lot of magic items, you might not have any magic items. You've got, you know, rope and pitons and chalk or whatever the hell else is in your backpack. And you know, you kind of feel like you have to kind of MacGyver your way out of it. And I think both as a player and as a GM, when you get higher level, I think it becomes more reasonable that you're gonna try to be like, well, my players have all these, I mean, they've been investing in these characters for months yeah. and months and months. I want to give them a chance to kind of let loose and kick ass. Yeah. And you know, also too, to be completely blunt, most of the abilities that you get in Pathfinder 2nd Edition are aimed towards fighting. That's right. And that's what they keep taking. I mean, and that's what we were throwing at them, so I guess it's give and take both ways. Yeah. I, now, I will say, well, there was a quick question earlier. Um, someone was like, I'm a little nervous to join uh, Northern Reaches because I'm in the EU time zone. I will tell you that there's a ton of GMs that are in the EU time zone. And, um, and there's also some on the West Coast that run like late games, I think, and so therefore like it ends up being in the EU time zone. But we were, we had I don't know how many last year, maybe like four or five or six um, 
there's maybe more uh, GMs that were just running games specifically for EU players. Uh, there was a bunch of players that were uh, wanting those games, and we were uh, rewarding the GMs that would run those EU games for people. Some people wake up in the morning, run a game for people before work. It was it was it was wild. So yeah, don't uh, I, don't be discriminated by the um, or like scared of the idea that you're in the EU. I and mean, we had people in all over the world playing. I actually think probably maybe the hardest would be Australia because that's like sort of in the middle of nowhere um, in terms of the time zone for people. But even then, the West Coast people, I think, were playing them too. Yeah, so. the the Australian people usually would get in, like if people were running early games. Yeah, because they, they would be nighttime. You know, it'd be like if you were running because we had people run games before they went to work, so they had to get up and play like a six or seven a.m. game, yep. which is like seven or eight or nine p.m. Yep. Uh, Australian time, so that yeah. was pretty. Yeah, and I and then just the people that I've I've logged in right now, I know one of them for sure. Uh, uh, again, so we have thirty GMs. I've uh, officially reviewed and confirmed and approved of five sites that are ready to go, um, and uh, one of those is for sure an EU GM. I know he is uh, strategy. Yeah, and so he's been running EU games almost all the time. Mm -hmm. So, we talked earlier about how you started with D and D. You went to Pathfinder Second Edition. Yes. You've played a bunch of other game systems since yes. then. I'm curious, which one, which game system has been your favorite? Probably Pathfinder. Pathfinder Second Edition. If we're doing low level. So what? That's a good. Okay. okay. So if, if we're going high level, I ain't playing Pathfinder. Like. Okay, that's and, a big. And statement. I don't know if I also could play Pathfinder for, like, a, like a one through twenty like campaign. It just that's just too many sessions. Like. Now that's funny, because like I'm having a lot of fun in Abomination Vaults. Like because you used real, to be like, I just want to. I just want to kick with my one character. I just want to play it. I want to play it. I want to yeah. play it. I want to get to the highest possible level. What level is it? 50? I'll go to 50. Yeah. I want to get to the end of the mission. You know rah, 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 mission, 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 mission. You know what happened? We played 1 through 20, and it was awful. <laughs> that wasn't awful. It just, it was so, it was so long, and I felt so, like, kind of burnt out. And I think having a nice break or something in there. Now, I will say, it also, I would say also, if, if we have too many people in the party, I don't want to play Pathfinder either. Uh, if we were like having like a full crew, like it, all of our buddies, like Tim and all them showed up, I don't like know a about, like a five man, five or six. I mean, I would not. I don't want to not want to play Pathfinder too. We played Dungeon Time Extreme, which was like a hack of D and D five e. That felt way more fun to play with a big group of people. And we did have a big group of people for that. Theater of the Mind. And Rich joined us. That's right. We had Rich and my brother played. Right. So we had like five, six, seven people sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had trying to get the four dwarfs to unite the the was it a rock uh, <laughs> elemental? Uh, yeah, we 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 house ruled that. No, that four dwarves could summon an earth elemental. Yeah, it was awesome. And we said that they always could do that, but no one had ever done it before because there had never been four <laughs> dwarves in one party yeah. before. I don't know how many sessions we played, like 10, maybe, or eight. We only yeah, had it twice. We probably played like 10 or 11 sessions. It only happened twice. There was, it only happened twice because that was the only time that four people were present that were, that were playing, dwarves. That were dwarves. Yep. Yeah, most. So, you know, if, if I have a low, a low amount of people in a low level game, which has been Abomination Vaults, we've been playing with three PCs, and a GM, and it's been super fun. Yeah. Other than that, if I wanted to play D20, group people, I want to level up character, get a little grindy, I, 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 I'd probably just play D&D &D 5e just to make it easy on myself. Um, but with a good group of people, and you know, a fast-paced game, I don't know, that, like, uh, Blades in the Dark, Dungeon World have been a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to play sort of powered by the apocalypse, which is, which is what Root is, which is going to be coming up for us. And those kind of systems run with a, a very talented uh, uh, GM, uh, which I have not learned how to, I, I think, uh, well enough do uh, power by the apocalypse. Because you, during my birthday stream, you were just able to roll with the punches. Like, it was like nothing. And um, and that's, I think, the learned ability. But I don't think it's super hard because the rules are very light. Right. And so you're, you're doing it with a lot of flavor. Man, well, I was I was super engaged. Like, I'm like, I'm into this. You were also <laughs> super tanked. So I that. was almost super tanked. Um, you know, there's th an interesting point that you bring up there, which is, um, you know, the things about <laughs> South, South Pacific Cynics is Dungeon World. Blah. I don't know, man. It, it, it just the way, you know, you're rolling dice, you don't really, there's not really an initiative, you're sort of just rolling with the punches, like, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing? Oh, that's gonna happen, and then if I fail, it, I might I might succeed, I might not, and then if I, then there's like the chance of succeeding, but with a consequence, now like another element's like coming into the picture that I wasn't ready for, that you also as a GM weren't ready for. Right. And that actually excites me as a GM, knowing AP, obviously the worst, Weakness. but like a sandbox, like you kind of know what's gonna happen, but the players do determine a lot of it, but in the, Power of the apocalypse with adding consequences. It like is another element that I'm. That sounds so much fun. We got a fifteen dollar uh, tip from our man, oh. the traveler himself, uh, Rick S, who's tipped uh, fifteen dollars. Thank you, Rick. Who said Bob wants to play traveler. You know, 
I didn't play. You did not. Bob did not play because uh, I think uh, I think uh, our buddy posted this in the chat. But we, we, you know, we have our Friday group, which is ostensibly four people plus the GM, so five people. And when when everybody's present, we're playing we're playing Legend of the Five Rings yes. because you know it's a more, one of our guys is a remote. It's more narrative game, and yeah, our, one of our buddies is remote, yep. and so we decided that because Legend of the Five Rings is like there's no minis, there's no theater. Of the, it's all theater of the mind. It's mostly a lot of intrigue and politics and a lot of conversations yep. and talking and tea ceremonies and all that other stuff, that would be the best game for yes. him. But we were like, but you know, he's out, he's got his own life and his wife and he does a lot of cool, crazy yeah. shit on his own. Yeah, he does. He rehabilitates wolves and all this other crazy puts stuff. Puts out fires. Puts out fires, forest, forest fires. fires. <laughs> so he's not absent, when he's absent, and so it's just us local guys. Yes. So it's just me, Bob, and our buddy George and Smith. Yep. We play Abomination Vaults. We're playing Pathfinder Second yeah. Edition. Super fun. So that that so Bob is sort of in, the, and then the, the 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 third group, which is very rare, <laughs> is Bob isn't there. Yeah, somehow I'm busy. <laughs> somehow Bob is because if I'm not there, no. we're not playing because I'm the GM. If Smith isn't there, we're not playing because we play at his house. Yeah. George doesn't miss. And George never misses, so that's not an option. <laughs> um, and so if Bob misses, Aaron and... Now, the first time I missed was literally after your stream, Rick, with with the Dur <laughs> or with, with Derek, and every one of them bought, like, every Traveler book. Yeah, everyone, everyone went out and bought $200 worth of Traveler books. But, like, um, the other three guys, Aaron loves science fiction, mm -hmm. Star Wars, Star Trek especially. I think almost all expands. of you, all four of you, are Star Trek fans, and I am not. And George isn't as much, but George okay. loves like Battletech, oh, and he okay. loves other okay. really complex, kind of hard sci-fi games. Yep. Um, and so that group really, really, you know, kind of dig dug into Traveler. I don't. I don't know if I'd like it. I don't know if you'd like it either. Yeah. I, I, I did know, not like that Star Swarm or Forge or whatever. I don't know if it's the genre, but um, you know, uh, the Space Mortgage might get you. They have a space mortgage. I already have a tough time keeping <laughs> up with uh, Pathfinder and like Magic Missile or whatever it's going to be called. Now. Force Barrage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can have a hard enough time remembering my sorcerer skills, um, you know, my dangerous sorcery and stuff like that. That I that I I think a traveler game might be a really difficult to ask. Yeah. But maybe not. I don't know. You know, although randomly, but like Bob mentioned dangerous sorcery, and I think about how like it really is. Like if you're playing like a primal elementalist sorcerer, it really is quite with dangerous sorcery because of course you're going to have dangerous sorcery. It really is quite confusing to how to play that because your dangerous sorcery applies one point of damage per spell level, but only to spells cast from your slots. Your blood magic ability, which gives you one point of damage per spell level, but only against one target, applies only when you use a bloodline spell. And then randomly, there's one spell, which is probably both, which is fireball, which then would get both. Um, it's just, it's. Well, it, here, here's the whole thing. And it's very confusing. Look, like, I just started playing. Like, I, I mean, I'm not saying that you have an excuse because you well, played it for 20 levels and you probably should have figured it out by then, but it is a very complex. And you know what? And even Aaron apologized to you. Yes, because he was. Because Aaron is a, a sorcerer in our yeah. Abomination Vaults game and he is playing an Imperial sorcerer and he has dangerous sorcery and he was going to do a magic missile and he usually does like three magic missiles, you know, max level. Yep. And he was using like a lower level magic missile and was doing two missiles with only two actions. And he was sitting there doing the numbers and I looked at him and I was like, dangerous sorcery. And he goes, ah, shit, dangerous yeah. sorcery. And he goes, Bob, I, I apologize. <laughs> this shit is hard. Yeah. Now, Smith will catch up faster on it than I do. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. Not, I would not, I did not get it. But, I mean, again, I just started playing this three years ago and, and TTRPGs and really in, in, in Pathfinder probably two and a half years ago. But I mean, like, come on. Spell level is not equal to your level. It just doesn't make any sense. You're just asking for people to get confused. <laughs> you know, let me know in chat. So one of one one proposed a proposed change I have is to remake the spell system for Pathfinder Second Edition and make it 20 spell levels across 20 levels and just move all the spells into level 1, 2, 3, 4, Thanks 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So for example, like haste might be level five, not level three, because you would get it at level five. And then slow would be level six, which doesn't mean you get it at level 11, which is when you normally would. You get it at level six. Yes. 
And then that way also too, within a, uh, within a space, right? We know, we know we did all the spells. We know that there's some spells that are better than others. Yes. Right, so we have our S and A tier spells, and then we have our lower tier spells. So we could take some of those lower tier spells and move them down That's a level. right, and now you get them earlier. And now you get them earlier, and then, you know, you could maybe take some of your slow, yes. and you could make it level six, which is like adding like half a level to it. Yep. So at least it's a little bit more delayed, yep. and it feels a little bit more powerful. I mean, that, that to me is like one of the, the dumbest things, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever. I, 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 I'm new to this, you know, I'm just learning, but uh, that and the whole scroll level, wand level. Sure. Is just another nightmare, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we got a super chat uh, uh, from, I can't read that. Blood Earnest. Blood Earnest. He's a Northern Reaches member. Okay, what do you say? Uh, love loving story time with Bob and Derek, but gotta sleep. Go Jagged Pine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blood Ernest is showing his support for the Jagged Pine Pact. Yep. Um, which uh, uh, where did I put them? Oh, here, Bob. You be on the thing. Let me what do I do with my hands? <laughs> oh, you're talking about this stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So the Jagged Pine Pact against the Lumberjacks. For people that don't know, last year in season one, there was this big deal that the Lumberjacks wanted to advance north port, so they were taking the wood from the Jagged Pine Forest. The Fae didn't like that, so there was this sort of clash, and it became this, this major conflict in the northern reaches, which, you, you know, we, did, we definitely scripted that before the season started. <laughs> yeah, if I could have picked anything that I would want to happen in my awesome Pathfinder 2 Mega campaign, it would have been Lumberjacks versus Fae. <laughs> yeah. Which would never have, it's like, it's nothing I would have ever picked ever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, Jagged Pine Pack is coming back. Lumberjacks have got to be scared, Bob. Uh, there, the, there are way more um, uh, Jagged Pine Pack than Lumberjacks, and I think it is that Druid-free archetype that right. they really want. <laughs> you know, that is actually something, I, I know, again, you know, uh, uh, somebody <laughs> said this is like the return of the podcast, and that's probably pretty accurate. You know, Wait till we get the podcast well, back in here. <laughs> so there is something that I am a little concerned about. Yes. Which is... And, you know, again, people in chat, um, you know, feel free to chime in. Which is, the more people that join a faction, the better it gets. Yes. So when you join a faction, when you start at the faction, you know, you're, two, this, you're person number two. You're like, come on, join our faction, it'll be sweet, right? So then your faction gets to 15 or 20, and you get all these really cool benefits. And now you're the 21st member that joins, and you get all those benefits. Yep. So now when someone else joins, they look at the factions... And they go. Which one's gonna be the most? Which one's gonna give me the most? That's exactly what's happening. Benefit. Yep. And so everybody's it's gonna. Snow, it's snowballs. It's snowballs. Yep. So I think we may have to put in some punishments. Well, I, <laughs> we haven't even started the season yet, so I'm already. Think, uh, me and Smith were talking about thinking about stuff to. Uh, okay. To have some well, fun with. Because I with you people. <laughs> yeah. Because I originally had an idea for a negative faction, which is, at one member that person gets insane benefits, uh, but then. If there's two to five members, they still get really good benefits. They're just not as good. They get lesser. And then if it's like six to ten members, still okay, but that's, a that's, little bit lesser. And so it's like you don't want people to join your you're, faction. You ever played Sushi Go? Uh, yes, I yeah, played Sushi there, Go. There was a there's a card that does that. It's like you want to get you want the one of, but if the, you get you get number three, you actually start going to negative. So you almost want to stiff them with the got it, with got it. it. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, but what I was going to say is, we did get in today. These are going to be uh, available soon through our Knights of the Last Call Patreon ticket merch store. Uh, we did get our two new stickers. Um, we also did a limited, we're going to be doing a limited release of the original Knights of Last Call sticker, the, the logo sticker, the one that you see. But we do have two new stickers, which are, again, they're limited. When they're out, they're out. We have a Northern Reaches, hard to see on camera, but we have a official Northern Reaches seal sticker um, that we had designed. So it's the official Northern Reaches see this logo. Thing up close here. Oh yeah, that's pretty baller. Um, and then you guys, are, yeah, you guys, are, yeah, again, you guys might not be able to see it, uh, but uh, oh, that's definitely worse on my camera. But that is a uh, um, Valix. Valix, Queen of yeah, Winter. Queen of Winter. And then we also have our first official sticker logo variant, which is the um, Get Fucked <laughs> Knights of Last Call sticker. Uh, that's right. We have a sticker that says Get Fucked. Yeah. <laughs> because why wouldn't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so those are all going to be things that are available for, for our patrons uh, to, to use with their new tickets, which are going to be rolling out here shortly. Uh, you might already start to have some. I've started putting some tickets yes. into some people's accounts. So, um, By the way, uh, Vin had sent us a super chat, and he said, uh, Nightlife? Yeah. 
and 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 especially for Vin, Vin, uh, Vin obviously loves it. But the idea is that you know, if now that we're back at the studio, we can have these conversations again, maybe a little more specific than what nightlife was was this long rambling thing. But if we can get uh, more of on topic things, you know, getting Nick back in the studio, getting you know, Matt's available or whomever, like uh, any of our friends, we have we have a big group of friends and. Um, uh, anybody want to come in for 30 minutes, especially like some people that maybe are not familiar with TCRPGs and coming in with a different perspective than Derek, very high up. And then me, I used to be that guy. I mean, I'm, I'm a little higher now, but I used to be real low. Now I'm in the, you know, in the lower bracket, you know, bringing some brand new fresh face. And it's like, okay, now let's talk about philosophy here. You know, that could be very, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see some cool, some, some people in chat, Zerverus and, and Claude Corp talking about, uh, you know, some, uh, different uh, ideas about factions. I definitely think we're going to take some of those ideas and we're probably going to you know, come up. Because again, here's the thing. I don't want to screw anybody over anything. But I always say, I want my games to be interesting. I want people to be making interesting decisions. If you join the game and there's one faction that gives you all these benefits and then the other factions don't give you shit, well, then that's not a decision, yep. you know? And I don't want people making boring decisions. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just had Dr. Metropolis. Renew for five months. I like doing the... <laughs> doing the... Thank you, Dr. Metropolis, for your five-month sub there. Thank you so much. Wow, sweet five months. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, again, you know, Vin, you know, one of the things that originally started us off here was, uh, you know, the quote-unquote normie perspectives, right? Um, and one of the things I would like to do with this space is find people who may not be... Um, you know, super familiar with role-playing games. Well, and you've always said this. The, and the bring reason them in. the channel started yeah. was teaching me. And then it became, okay, are we actually making a channel now? You know, are we actually going to do uh, more than just filming us playing AP? Right. And then you were like, is there a way that I, Derek, again, I'm pretending to be you now, uh, can educate the world like I'm educating Bob? Is there a way that I can mm -hmm. teach people? And then we started, we, then we got the Discord and the Patreon together. And then you were like, this is exactly what I thought would be, this is the best thing ever. We can now have a space where we can all learn from each other and all these different games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it goes without saying, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot of games from this channel too. I mean, 100 live streams. I mean, this hasn't just been evolution of Bob. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been an evolution for me. I mean, yeah. I have learned, uh, I have talked more about role-playing games in the last two and a half years than I ever talked about them in the, the prior 20. And um, I've thought more about them and I've had the opportunity to, you know, really, really look into them and, and, and think about them in a very, critical way that I probably didn't, you know, um, think about them before. And so that's been really interesting for me. I mean, as a, as a dungeon master, for me to learn something after playing this for, you know, 30 some odd years, uh, it's pretty cool. And so there's a lot of people in the Patreon who, I, you know, I listen to their advice. And when they say, hey, you should pick up a game, you know, and I take a look at it. And like, you know, if people like Damien or Ben, when they say, hey, this game's like really sweet, literally legit, you should check it out. I usually check it out. And, you know, they don't, they're not always hits. Um, but and you spent two hundred dollars on uh, traveler books, and then I went and spent two hundred dollars on traveler books. Um, <laughs> so uh, exactly, entertaining and educational conflict. And yes, we uh, we we just hit over nine k subs, um, so we're on our way to ten k. That's right. Which help us get there. Yeah, by liking and subscribing below. Yes, you can help us. <laughs> By the, the way, case. yeah, um, and again, you know, a show like this is really more for our dedicated fans, and yeah. we're just kind of really just kind of kicking back and relaxing a little bit. Um, you know, it's been pretty busy, been a pretty crazy run-up. We, I got Origins to go to, and, and while Origins is going to be really fun for me, you know, I am going to be busy. You know, I mean, I'm bringing my, I'm bringing our podcasting equipment, I'm yep. probably going to bring some cameras, I'm going to be trying to talk to certain people, and maybe work certain things out, you know what I mean? Um, I, I'm going to be uh, drinking and eating <laughs> and then trying to see what games I can swindle myself into. <laughs> right, so, so you know, I, I, and also, you know, we're, we're going to have some patrons who are going to show up, and I'd like to show them, uh, you know, a great, we'll go plan a dinner and maybe get a, a cool game together that we could all play. Um, and uh, so... I want to play, play Oath. Yeah. That's the game That's the game that you guys talked about so much last Origins, I really want to play. That's right there. Oh, it's up there, yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, well, we're definitely gonna play some Oath. Oath, and, and I, I have a couple other people to visit while I'm down in Columbus, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to see the fans. Don't need uh, to tip $50. Uh, some of our friends have that, some yeah, fun at home. Fans, but obviously, they're friends of ours too. That we, we, we saw last year. Hey, yo! Oh, Donnie, Donnie, we just saw you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Taylor in the house with a $50 tip. 
Have fun at Origins, you filthy animals. Thank you, Donnie. Thank Donnie you. was our guest yesterday. He was in here in the That's studio. Right. We got, it, yeah, uh, we, we shared, we had some bourbon with him. We went to dinner with him. Uh, it was fantastic, it was amazing, and it was so awesome to have him, him in the studio and have him here. It was great. Thank you very much, Donnie. And then uh, Whoopelstein, yeah. a brand new uh, it's member. It's over 9,000. <laughs> Is that a Dragon Ball Z it's reference? Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> it's Vegeta. I knew that. I knew that it was over 9,000. Yeah, I mean. Like all the super changes all of a sudden come I out of nowhere. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. Um, just waiting. Just waiting. Uh, let's see. Tim. Uh, Tim says, I've been enjoying Derek's passion and experience and Bob's infectious enthusiasm. I mean, they, you know, it's funny. It hasn't been so much lately, but I remember probably about a year and a half ago, you guys just called me like, the, like a new puppy. Like, anytime you guys would talk about something, I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever you want to do, uh, I'll, I'll play. Yeah, what do you want to play? You want to play a game? I'll play a game with you guys. You guys are like, it's so funny to see Bob, like, so pumped up. Uh, but, yeah, I still am that way. So I guess still, I'm, like, still super excited to play L5R tomorrow. And then Abomination Falls the week after. And then getting a root here soon. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I, look, it's been good for me. You know, Aaron and I are kind of on the same wavelength. And so you're definitely a different vibe. Yep. You know? Um, and so, I, you know, I, I, you know, and I, and I think Tim, you know, uh, and Mass Fam. We'll, we'll get to you in a second. Uh, by the way, I saw that it was your first super chat from you, so wow. big shout out to that. But um, you know, um, to Tim's point, you know, a lot of people. I think people who understand the mission of this channel get that I am coming from a place of passion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I wouldn't talk th about stuff like this if I didn't care about it <laughs> for three hours at yeah, a time. <laughs> right. Like so, when people are like, "Oh, Derek shits on everything," no. No, I, I promise you I don't. Like you shit on it for a hundred hours a month. Like, yeah. You, you put in a ton of I'm time. not that I'm not that masochistic, you know? Um and so it's like it's it's one of those things where for me, uh it's because I am so passionate that I have so many opinions. And so what I think people confuse it with me being hypercritical with is just me being opinionated. Yeah. Right, well, and if they get to know you, they they would. Yeah, and so I think that's that's kind of where that you know where that kind of came from. But I appreciate the sentiment, Tim. Thank you for that, and uh, thank you, Donnie and Wolpelstein, for your uh, support as well. That is very generous of you. Now, Mass Fam asked a question, Bob. Yes, this one's for I'll, me. I'll let. Oh, that's for you. This one says, uh, "How do you feel about Northern Reach's members that aren't too active?" I'm very interested, but not sure if I can make time for any. Uh, well, one, I think you should definitely just uh, will join and uh, just <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> well, uh, the reason I said that there was one person that was like, "Can you guys give me like the lore updates as it happens?" I'm like, just join Northern Reaches and just like follow along, like be a fly on the wall, be like an NPC. You know what I mean? Like just be like a fly on the wall, just like be part of the community and be part of this like cool story that everyone's telling because you're gonna see how it develops. And you're gonna be like, that's not what I expected day one, and you're gonna see the same thing we'd see. But uh, but two, um, obviously I know the people more that participate more, so I'm more interactive with them. So it may seem like I'm biased towards them, but I know I know some of the people that didn't play much last season, and and they seem fine. It, all I remember is the people that play, the people I remember the most people that played my games. <laughs> yeah, and so let's also talk about two yes. things. One of which is in play, and one of which is pending, coming soon. Oh, that's right. Um, so the first is we have a rule in Northern Reaches called sidekicking. Yep. Okay. And what side, this takes advantage of the fact that we are playing on Foundry VTT. Yes. So what sidekicking is, is if you had, say, a level one or two character, three character, um, you've got your feats, your magical items, all for being level three. The party, there's a party going on an adventure. They're level seven. Yep. But they need somebody. And you say, hey, I'm yeah. free. I'd love to join. We need, but we need a fourth member. The fact of the matter is that in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, a level 3 party member with a group of level 7 party members going up against level 7, 8 threats is going to be very, very ineffective. The math is too tight. You're not going to be able to support that. But we are playing with Foundry. Yep. And that means all you need to do. Now, we have an official record of what level you are and all this other stuff. So we know all this I made, stuff. I made a spreadsheet. Bob has a spreadsheet. <laughs> so what you can do is you can sidekick and your character, you go into Foundry when you load into that game and it's like one of the other members takes you under their wing yep. and you get to take your level up to seven. And you would actually just, all you have to do in Foundry is just change your level to seven and it will automatically give you all of the features and abilities of a level seven character. Correct. What it won't give you 
is all of the feats of a level seven character. You're not supposed and to. And you would not, and normally you would go and drag your feats into your character. You won't do that. Yep. So you'll be a level seven character with the proficiencies of a level seven character, with the armor class of a level seven character, but what you won't have are the feats. Yeah, you, you will be able to play, you just won't be like as effective as right, that there's perfect you know, level seven character, but right. you're gonna be able to play. You're gonna be able to participate. You're gonna be able to hit. Right, and, and we and we, this was born out of a couple of things. We saw last year that we would have lower level people joining a group to, because they wanted to play. They wanted to play. And it, and it was late in the season. and it was it was rough. You know, the, those characters kind of didn't do anything. Yeah, they, they kind of just they sat felt, in the background. They, they felt like they were sort of missing out. So we wanted to take advantage of that. Right. So that is sidekicking, and that I think is a huge. And by the way, that's the sidekicking is fantastic. The second option, which is not in our release, yes, Tim brought it up. <laughs> uh, okay, Tim brought it up is uh, we are working. At, Bob mentioned the uh, we we had played Iron Sworn, yeah. which is the kind of the the solo RPG, which has been sort of taking uh, the the RPG verse by storm. Um, I can't remember the name of the author right now, but you know, Iron Sworn is the uh, fantasy version. There's Star Forge, which is the sci-fi version. Aaron really likes that. We've played that. We've also messed around with some other ideas. We like the idea of including some solo rules. Yep. Now, this is a community game about collaborating with your fellow players. Solo play will never be as efficient or expedient to gain levels and become powerful as going on, quote unquote, real adventures Epic. with your with your fellow patrons. Yep. But epic adventure. But for people who want to sort of enjoy a kind of solo play experience and sort of get to be part of the um um the process of being part of Northern Reaches, we want that to be an option for you. And so we are going to eventually release some solo rules. Right. And that's going to give you experience and treasure, um, and you'll be able to level up that way. Maybe not as fast, but if there's a period of time where you're just super busy, but you still want to maintain you know, presence in the game, that's what the solo play rules are going to be for. I saw two other comments that were in there. One was from Boothby saying I made fun of him because he doesn't, uh, he didn't play last year. And that, that's true. I make fun of Boothby, but I, I actually really appreciate Boothby, and I think he's actually an amazing GM. Uh, but he might be an overlord, so I can't make fun of him too much. And then KC also mentioned he played zero sessions last year, and I also make fun of KC a lot too. <laughs> but the funny thing that I'm saying is I actually know them, and I and I, I sort of I rib on them because of that. Um, I did see I thought someone else said something. Oh, Donnie said something about uh, yeah that you need to. Uh, workshop uh, uh, some to torches into these columns. Yes, he's ribbing on you. So that is, that is, you know, that is one point. And uh, uh, John, John Smith sent a super chat. I missed oh. that. John, thank you. Five dollars super chat. Criticism shows care. Disagreement is the crucible of thought. Agreement is the death of conversation. Well said. Well said. Um, and you know what? We always say that all the time. We say that on our streams, and we say that in our Patreon. We say, come here to disagree. Come here to challenge. Come here to learn. Don't come here to be an asshole. Don't come here to be a dick. Don't come here to troll. But people can disagree mm -hmm. and not be disrespectful. People can disagree and agree to disagree yep. because this isn't a matter of life or death. This isn't a matter of you know moral right or wrong. These are RPGs. Yeah. If you like what you like, that's fine. But don't get offended when I ask you why. <laughs> <laughs> right. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> because I will. I will ask you why. And the, the answer, just because, I'm, I'm going to give you shit about that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not a valid. That's different. <laughs> that's not a valid answer. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm challenging you to explore. It's fine that you like something. I just want you to think about it and wonder, oh, why do I like that thing? What are the factors? What makes me enjoy that? You know, I'm very fascinated by, like, what makes role-playing games tick. Yeah. You know, why and is this Why fun? are these people interested in this? Or right. what what made it fun for them and not fun for other people? Exactly. Because it makes you a better game master. It makes you a better designer or things like that. Yes, exactly. And, and, and yeah, so... And, uh, and London says, what's up with that play-by-post channel? I don't even pay attention to that channel. That channel is too intense for me. Is there... Is he saying the PB... Is there a PB... Post channel in or no, no, no. I oh. think he was sort of right, because isn't London in the play by post? Uh, London channel? is the play by yeah, post yeah. channel. So I think he's kind of like, what's going on? What's the deal? Uh, like, what's, what's the deal with the play by deal? What's the deal by the play by post channel? Is if you know, we don't just have Northern Regions. We also have a lot of other community games that aren't Pathfinder Second Edition. So if you're interested in playing Call of Cthulhu, Blades in the Dark, Avatar, I'm trying to think of these. These are the games that are going on currently. Yeah. Uh, Call of Cthulhu, they're, they're Avatar, Traveler, Traveler yeah. the new Avatar. Blaze in the Dark, someone's starting a Dungeon World, someone else is starting on a Blade, and there's going to be a two Blades in the Dark game. I wish I had time for all those games, because I'm I just too busy. I'm just too busy to jump in all those games. Yeah, so, 
Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a screenshot of play by post in Northern Reaches. I don't remember that, so that okay. might be a Smith thing. But yeah, so but we also have play by post. So for people who are very, you know, busy, play by post can be a fantastic way for you to Claude get to play. Claude tip three dollars. Uh, okay Claude tip Claude tip three dollars. No okay now, eighty minutes in, and still no what's mention happening? of the potion of elixir. What's happening? To be fair, Claude, he did start calling them missions. He he did slip back into calling them missions. Yeah. Um, when I when I talk too much, I, I slip back into my old ways. A, a lot of things that's kind of funny is the reason I did start with the potion of elixir is because I played D and D for those th six sessions, and you know you're trying to get the Potion of healing, and then I start playing Pathfinder. And, and you're like, an alchemist. And I'm an alchemist, and I need Elixir of Life. And I'm like, I just, I just got it. It was just too much. I, it was too much for Bob's yeah. brain. <laughs> well, one, I have dyslexia, uh, and two, again, I, I have a lot of memes that are uh, things that I do because I shortcut things in my head, and I just kind of spiel and spit things out like Map Attack and something like stuff like that. But uh, I have a lot of fun with it. But Potion of Elixir was just something, and and, and it was funny because people, I, I think they might have thought I was joking, but I was dead serious. I, I for sure thought I was right when I said it, but I was just mixing the two, uh, two games up. Oh, Claude, there will absolutely someday be some sort of Potion of elixir. Yeah. The, the actually the thing that's been I mean, mostly shoved through is a is a potion of elixir uh, uh, beer koozie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your for your that, beer. That, that sounds like the best. And thing just to get it printed it. on there and have yeah. it say potion of elixir. But of course, potion of elixir reached its <sighs> potion of elixir reached its greatest moment was during our Rise of the Rune Lords live stream. Yeah. When we introduced the Wheel of Pain. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. And you guys were fighting the yes. massive troll chieftain, the the water troll with that massive black adamantine trident. And you guys got him down to under 10 hit points. Yeah, a turn away. And somebody in the chat tipped for a Wheel of Pain spin. Somewhere probably in the dark. And it so. came up, and, and we didn't know what was really on the wheel, or you guys didn't know what was on the wheel. I didn't know. And it came I mean, up. I, I kept seeing names, but I never saw like the list. Right. And then it came up, and it said, Potion of Elixir. And it said, full the one, one monster of the GM's choice is raised to full health. Oh, such a kick in the And like, the, this oh, thing had like 275 rough. hit points. So it went from like 10 all the way back up to 275. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was, oh. that was that was a rough one. Uh, it's our council. Never heard of them, um, Darth. This is like an anniversary stream. It's yeah, just me and Bob. One hundred. It's just me and Bob hanging out, talking about you know kind I'm of the free good, tonight. Yeah, <laughs> Bob was free. We're talking about the good old days, and uh, you know just hanging out. We love paint should make a return. You know, uh, we were talking in, in absence. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about this with Donnie last night here, actually. Um, he said, he made, he said I, I said the word mission at the bar. I didn't even notice I said it. Yeah, you do I say I just it. say it. It's part of my video gaming. <laughs> uh, Self-confessed cynic with $2 says, bring back fun, bring back the wheel, MTTRPGGA. -T -T -M -M <laughs> I didn't think Vin liked the, the wheel of pain. No, Vin likes chaos. Oh, uh, okay, okay. The wheel was brutal. <laughs> so, you know, because, well, okay. For those of you, again, who don't know, you know. We, yeah, what is the wheel of pain, Derek? <laughs> we, we, we. We take for granted that you know we've had such a loyal base that not everybody understands this. Um, so, uh, look, it's nice to be able to buy our patrons gifts. It's nice to be able to build these cool sets and have all these cool, fun uh, microphones and lights yeah. and all this other stuff. Um, well, we're not critical role. We're not critical role. We only so, have we only have you guys right now in the chat watching us. <laughs> yes, right. Liking us. <laughs> so uh, for us, in order to make money, in order to be able to do all this, um, you know, we need our patrons and we need, because we don't get a lot of views. You know, even like even people who are getting, oh, oh they, they got 10,000 views on a video. That's just nothing. I mean, that's yeah. that's forty bucks. It's not a lot of money. So we get two thousand views, three thousand views. So we're really only making like ten dollars or something like that, twelve dollars a video. So we make all of our money through tips and through patron supporting. And one of the things I like about being live is that ability to interact with our, our chat. So when we were playing our Rise of the Rune Lords actual play, it was pretty rough. We were spending a lot of time and uh, to to make the videos and then they were getting posted, yep. and they weren't getting a lot of views, nope. and that meant that I was spending a lot of time and making no money on them. So when we went live. Yeah, COVID hit, we went live. Right, so we said, okay, well, we're not gonna meet up in person. Nope. Okay, we're gonna be from home. Okay, uh, what, what can we do to make it fun and encourage yeah, people to tip? We gamified a bit. We gamified it a bit, and we introduced the ability for people in chat to donate money to their favorite player 
and if that person got enough money, they would get a hero point. A broken hero point. Well, it was a very powerful very hero broken point. Hero to be point. fair, though my hero points were always designed to be like once an adventure. Nah, maybe I've, maybe twice an adventure. I banked, I banked those for multiple okay? sessions. <laughs> like and so when suddenly when people could buy them for a player, it became very very powerful. So there was a group of people who said the game is too easy, right? Your your group you're, of people you mentioned. It, well, no, no, just it, just everybody, right? <laughs> just, everybody was just like, oh, the, the hero points make it too powerful. The hero points are too powerful, and now that people can buy them for the heroes, it's too you know, it's too powerful. We need we need an op, we need an opposing force. Yes, right. And then there was concerns because someone said, well, if you make an anti-hero point, then it becomes an arms race. Yes. And I said, it won't become an arms race. It totally became an arms race. I, I, I was 100% wrong. It, was, it totally became an arms race. So we made something that we called the Wheel of Pain. Yep. 1.0, okay? Yes. So with Wheel of Pain 1.0, we had some very, very mild, uh, uh, painful things in chat that usually resulted in a pull. Yes. So, like, for example, there might be a, something that would come up and it would say, one random player has to describe why they're going on this adventure. Yeah. And the, the chat will vote to see I, if they I thought... I like, sing a poem or something. You like had to, that. like, yeah. write an epic poem or something yeah, like that. Yeah, which I had written already because and, I had done something with the channel. <laughs> and what ended up happening was the chat would, you know, the chat is typically pro-PC. So the chat would always go... Not our chat. The chat would go, good job, good job. And nothing bad would happen. Yeah. And what ended up happening is what we called Wheelgate. Yes. Which is where people were upset because they said, hey, listen, I'm paying money to fuck your game <laughs> and to destroy these players. Um, if I'm going to pay money to, to spin this wheel of pain, I want it to be painful. Yeah. Well, it's called the wheel of pain. The, the, I wanted it to be pain. The thing you have to learn about me, <laughs> Bob, you probably know this. Probably. Is like, I uh, what, what, I don't know what the behavior is, where it's like, if somebody like starts to like push back on me or give me yeah, shit, wrong. I'll be like, okay, okay, motherfucker, you want to like I don't I, I I don't play chicken, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'll be like I'll go over the edge, it's fine, okay, so <laughs> I you won't do it, Doug. yeah, you won't do it, so I was like, okay, Aaron, let's redesign the Wheel of Pain, so we designed Wheel of Pain 2.0, yeah. Broken ass wheel. Wheel of pain, pain 2.0 was very painful. Brutal. Now, to be clear, though, wheel of pain, Brutal. despite its despite its painfulness, wheel of pain 2.0, which for example had like potion of elixir, yep. which healed the troll all the way to full hit points. But people were tipping for the heroes, and the wheel of pain was powerful, but it wasn't. I mean, it's still Pathfinder 2. Yeah. The players have all the advantages in the world. It kind of. Kept, I mean, look, case point. You guys fought a 275 hit point. I think extreme boss. Uh, twice. Tw and then it went all the way down to 10 hit points and then went all the way back up to full hit points and you still beat it. That's and right. you still And you still won. It is Pathfinder. Oh, also <laughs> at the end of that event, or at the end of that fight versus that big troll monster, they tipped again on the Wheel of Pain and I believe Bob, your character got dominated. Ah, uh, did he? Like Dark Charm and went to go like attack. Yeah, another... somebody did something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that was like that, um, I, that anamorphic scorpion thing or something yes. was in there yes. or something like that. So point is, you know, even with the Wheel of Pain being bad, the players were still, you know, winning. Now, what ended up happening in the very famous, spoiler alert, Super, 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 super spoiler alert. If you are if you have not watched our Rise of the Rune Lords turn, campaign. Turn off now. Just cut, cut ahead five minutes. <laughs> um... In our final episode, Hook Mountain Massacre, where the group went up Hook Mountain to deal with the Krieg clan ogres and Barl, uh, Barl Batterfist or whatever, the stone giant lord, uh, couple of, there was a couple of conspiring factors there. Number one, the people, the, the heroes had gotten real lackadaisical. We walked into like an avalanche. <laughs> uh, with their, because they were so used to having all of these broken hero points yeah. that they, they stopped conserving resources and they started just like getting real, like, oh, like they'd like make a check to see if you can, I don't know, skip. And they'd be like, oh, I failed. Oh, I'm gonna use a hero point, whatever. Because they were so used to getting all these hero points from the chat. Well, whatever reason that day, the chat wasn't really tipping a lot of money for the players. So the players did not have that bank of broken hero points. On top of that, this was the end of the adventure, right? I had, I was escalating the, the tension. There were a lot of, you know, severe, severe pluses, even extreme fights. So these were already going to be tough. Yeah. And then they went into a fight, and there was some wheel of painage, 
and a character died to an avalanche that was caused by the Wheel of Pain. But he had been really damaged oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the fight, which was Tim's character, yeah, yeah. Wildor the Wizard. Yep. Now at that point, you've got a group of party members who have none of these broken hero points, are down a PC. Yep. Game and, over. And the group decided to go in and assault the fortress anyways. I wanted to retire. I wanted to go back to the town and retire as a- And to be clear. A, 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 a barkeep. I believe consequences matter. <laughs> Had the group been at the verge of assaulting Hook Mountain and attacking the Kriegs, but then Gwildor died to the perimeter guard, and there was the, I used the, I used the Battles of Bestiary, I used that bone dragon. Oh, the skeletal monstrosity. Skeletal thing. monstrosity. Yeah. yeah. I think it's sweet. It was sweet. I used the skeletal yeah. monstrosity, I used a couple custom ogre guards, yeah. and we had a really cool, great fight, and then Gwildor died. If the group had gone back to Turtleback Ferry, to recover their strength, or even further back, there would have been consequences. Yeah, I would have. I wouldn't have been like, "Yeah, you go back. Yeah, you rest to full. You come back, and everybody's good." Yep. No, no. Like you would have been like messed up, or they would have finished their plan, or they would have twice as many soldiers, or they would be super ready for you, or that night they would have followed you down the mountain and yeah, attacked I you in town and burnt it to the death. Yep, right. I was. Intense. I do not believe that players should get away with this stuff for free. So I'm not trying to say that like they were idiots for pressing on. But their idea was, you know, because they knew if we go back, there's going to be consequences, and we may not want to deal with those consequences. Plus, heroes never say die. So the group pressed on. Now, and I think that was already very dangerous. Yeah. But. Then the tipping came in. Ironically, of all, earlier in that campaign, the group famously almost had a TPK versus a very easy fight versus a spellcaster. Oh, who, God, this is the, the ogre or, this, or the... Yeah, the, the, uh, well, female Dorella, Dorella yeah. Krieg, yeah. who is a sorcerer, and the group... Lightning bolted us. They didn't know, okay, she's a sorcerer, they didn't necessarily know what she had, whatever. They were all in a straight line, she cast lightning bolt. Yep. Hit them all. The next round later... I moved. Bob moved, the rest Every of everybody else in the party was straight still line. in a straight line. Boom, she hit them all with a lightning bolt again. Yeah. It was... Uh, uh, it was I think a, Matt's line was, what are the chances she has another lightning bolt? <laughs> <laughs> right, and I went, Matt, she's a sorcerer. You, she's the same level of sorcerer as you. You know exactly how many lightning bolts she has. The answer is a shitload. She has like four of them. And guess what? She's gonna use all of her best spells. Right, <laughs> That's right, all right. and she's she a monster in Pathfinder 2, she's gonna use her highest level spells. So, um, <laughs> what ended up happening though is the group went in and they, they, they did one encounter and then they went deeper into the Krieg Mountains and they found this forge room where the Krieg ogres were busy forging weapons of war for the coming you know, giant army of Rise of the Rune Lords. And who was in that room? Well, because they didn't kill them from the prior adventure, I put this spellcasting ogress, Dorella Krieg, and Hook Hookjaw or Hookmaw, the, yeah. the ogre who had like an iron jaw her down his face. Lover, her son lover, cousin, brother in law. Yeah. And she proceeded to start messing them up, and it was already going to be really horrible. I think they might have died anyways. There wasn't there like hags or something flying around? No, because that's when the Wheel of Pain started oh, gosh, dropping in. And that's mad. when you guys had to like vote for who for what who what who got the what percent of the party's hit points. And then uh someone got a potion of elixir, and then, you know, something else, you know. Yeah, but um It was rough. And uh Yeah, and then came the final the final blow. Yep. And and that was it. But and we and we had we had a we had a, a very open and honest conversation with the the, the the patrons and with the chat. We had a live stream the, afterwards, and um, you know we talked about it and we said, okay, the wheel of pain was probably too extreme. Yes. Would you agree? Oh yeah. I mean, I was a player and it was it was pretty extreme. And here's the thing. I, I want to be very clear about something here. We saw a lot of people complain about um, even Matt complained. Yeah. And said, well, that wasn't fair to the players. You're right, but this isn't a campaign. It's a show. That, that, that's what it, yeah, exactly. Like, we, I mean, we are playing and we're having fun and that's great, but fundamentally we are here to entertain and show the game to people. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the Wheel of Pain made, yeah, like the Wheel that, of Pain yeah. made it much more fun. But it was, you know, whatever. It was crazy, it was kooky, it was, it was unpredictable, it was disruptive, and all those things are true. So we said, okay, we're gonna do Another AP. Yes. We, we're going to take a couple months off, reset, bring in a new, somewhat of a new cast, 
some of the old favorites, some new some new faces. We brought in Smith. Yeah, people that could make it because also our the studio wasn't exactly close to everyone. Too. Right, right. And it's, life's changed. It's hard for people to get there every week. Yeah, and so what we ended up doing was doing a new campaign, Quest for the Frozen Flame, and we didn't have Wheel of Pain, and we didn't make any money. <laughs> now at the end, we started to have some fun, yeah. jokey, fun things. Those are, those are fun. And, you know, you know, it's like, at that point, and, and by the way, I, I don't know how I missed this, but Vin had tips. He said, love chaos, but most of all, I love the chat interaction. Yes. And I agree with you. And, you know, I, saw, I think I saw Ayla saying, like, what, or someone was saying earlier, like, what is Root going to be like? Maybe yeah, it was Dark it was, Gorlock. No, someone else posted just under, yeah, it was like, is Root going to have that? It's not going to be, the, like, I don't think it can be. Yeah, I, I, I'm torn. Because I, I mean, like, the, the thing's here. We can see the chat. I mean, right. I can read the chat while we're playing here right now, you know. But what's going to, it's, it's going to sound cheesy, but, or or maybe greedy, but like, <laughs> the chat's going to move. And the more people are watching, the more the chat's going to move. Okay, but off to the side of that is the super chats and the tips. And so when we're getting into an, uh, a conflict or something in route, we, we're going to be probably into it because we're all here together. Right. And we're gonna miss some of the stuff that's said in the chat. So unless it's repeated or pulled off, it's it's gonna be hard to keep track of it. And it's easy with the super chats because it, 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 it usually comes in slower. People tipping is a little bit slower. So obviously, if you want, if you have something real important to say, we'll we'll probably get to it when we have a second to breathe. You know. And yeah. Breathe. Well, and then I think that's what it comes down to. Because I mean, I'll be honest with the the oh, the, the clocks in Frozen Flame were excellent. Yeah, the clocks. Oh, Claude is saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clocks, I think, was a really fun part of Quest of the Frozen Flame. People really liked that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and other people had mentioned. Wheel is more for one shots. It's for our charity streams, or if we're gonna, because we're gonna do charity streams in the future, stuff like that. That's, I think, the best time to really bring in the wheel or wheel like stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I think somebody mentioned the Poppet Adventure where we had yeah. the naughty list and then the uh, nice list. So fun. And, you know, we made a, 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 we made a, you know, everyone came out and really supported us for yeah. that holiday special. Uh, and we had a lot of fun with that. And, and earlier in the year, we had done the uh, Fistful of Flowers with the Leshy. Well, that's, that's when I jammed. And so the, if you wanted to see how Bob has grown as a GM from start to finish, I GM that one. And I had to deal with uh, Smith and Derek as players. So you imagine that. <laughs> so, you know, um, and, and I, so I do agree with that. I do agree with that. That that, that kind of randomness and chaos mm -hmm. and disruptiveness is probably more appropriate in something that's a little bit more jokey or have a little bit, you know, whatever. Um, and... Uh, Dan said, have the costs rise exponentially if there's a difference between support for characters and Wheel of Pain. Yeah, Dan, the cost did rise exponentially. The more you tipped for the Wheel of Pain, yeah. the more the next spin of the Wheel of Pain yeah. cost. We were trying to do that to deter people from just continually tipping. And they were like, well, if they're crazy enough to do that, I guess we'll make money. It didn't matter. They still just pushed it through. Yeah, I was they, like, wow, they, they're, they're literally just killing us straight it, up. It was, then, it was, then, it was a, then it became a thing like, will Derek actually kill his party? I really felt like it was. Yeah, I think no, no, no. I mean, we can talk about that in a second, yeah. but um, you know, um, <laughs> roll for combat, Stephen. Are, I thought you were going to join Northern Reaches. Uh, Signups <laughs> are open, and I have not seen your name come in yet for signing up as a GM or a player. So I'm still waiting on you. So don't give me. I want to play and not play in our games. <laughs> um, but but uh, Stephen, I think you are going to be there for Origin. So we should definitely play something together. Yeah. So that'd be fun. Oh yeah, I mean. It, we, we, Oh, gosh, how do I sign up? Uh, Steven. <laughs> pink, pink, pink. Read some rules in the pink, chat. <laughs> pink, ping them on the chat. Or, or go to the role assignment and pick up the Northern Reaches role. Yes, please. <laughs> um, but, or, or just message me, Stephen. I'll, I'll give you the, I'll, I'll let you know where you have to go. Uh, John has to hop out, but he says uh, he's glad he finally caught one of these obviously pre-recorded live streams. Next 4E video when? Um, I want to I want to, that's, that is one system I do want to play. And I just, I just want to play because of how, the monsters are designed. I really want to see monsters because I've seen you guys talk about uh, the different types of monsters. Um, the the, the uh, was it artillery and all this stuff, the leader, the brute, and all this stuff. And I think when I was building my Northern Region stuff at the beginning, and this is sort of how my, I've grown, I, I think I'm losing it as I go forward, or has been, because I've sort of been, been lazy a little bit. But I think I need to break it back down and go, what are these monsters? What are their purposes? What are their roles in this encounter? What's happening here? And I think Forey did a really good job in that. Yeah. So I think I could learn a lot from that. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Steven said our Discord has like 200 boards. That is true. We do have a oh, lot of- So many channels. We have a lot of channels. And, what, and if you have not clicked the Northern Reaches uh, tag yet for, um, 
for your oh, roll you'll, assignment, you'll, they're going to be a 200 more. Well, there's <laughs> about there's about 40 for Northern Reaches. <laughs> yeah. So to be clear, that's because not everybody's expected to have every roll. Yes. Because we do have a Monty Hall roll, which gives you all channels. But not everybody wants to know. Like you might not care about anime. You might not care about talking about movies or music. So we give you the option to basically not even see those channels, and you can just focus on the channels that you want to yep. focus on. So there is that. Um, Isaiah says, a volunteer chat mod during those streams and plays might not be a bad idea, particularly uh, particularly catching good chats and putting oh, them aside for good. Yeah. Like a good, a good, good questions or good comments could yeah. be a thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to be 100% honest with you, Isaiah, we have over here the sort of production thing. I, I can't flip the camera around, otherwise I'd show you. But we have a desk set up with a... PC and a bunch of monitors. That's where all the microphones get routed to. It's where all the cameras get routed to, which goes into OBS, which goes out to you. It's plugged into the internet, all that jazz. It was kind of set up originally. You, you know, you can see me over here. I'm, I'm using a stream deck to switch between me and Bob. But the idea was is that we could have like a producer who could be there watching the stream, making sure everything's healthy, and they could have a microphone and headphones, and they could potentially, you know, talk to the, you know, Talk to the chat. Talk to oh, and and Vin's right. And we might we were gonna do a, a oh, producer oh. cam. Vin, we have six inputs for cameras. Oh, yeah. Okay, we, we have a camera. We trust me. They would get a camera. Um, and uh, but the idea was that the producer would have the ability to kind of turn on their mic and come in and go. You know, hey fellas, uh, just want to give you a quick uh, quick notification. We just had a you know twenty five dollar shout from you know so 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 who says blah 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 blah. And then like that way we are not having to read chat and we can be more focused because obviously like tonight Bob and I were sitting here but we can we can read the chat and we can kind of focus um, on you all but when we when I'm GMing and we're playing root or whatever like that you know Bob oh yeah you know I'm we're gonna be like this yeah, and, I'm, and I'm looking at you or I'm looking at Pearson across the table I'm, I'm not always gonna be looking at the chat and and if I am looking at the chat it kind of is taking me away from the element like I was at the table on Friday night with with uh, Smith really engaging me with that conversation in L5R. Or when he was in, even in the Dungeon ma uh, Dungeon World hack that we played for my birthday stream, he, you know, he was talking about like running up to the ogre and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, he's doing that. Well, I'm not, I'm, I don't even worry about Jeff the Dwarf. I, I run for it. Like, but if I'm looking at the chat and reading it, I'm also not paying attention to him. So I don't want to lose too much. But then there is this idea that not every stream is going to be root. And so if we do have a different type of stream here, we can we can definitely interact with the chat more. There's going to be more or less in each one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it comes down to like, what's the tone of the, uh, what's the tone of the game and how, you know, how engaged do we want to be? I definitely think as a fun way for our chat, as well as a fun way for us as a play group, is I like the idea, you know, uh, and, and I did this a little bit, okay? Um, I, I did this a little bit with Quest for the Frozen Flame, where at the end, I would sort of set up these goals that if the chat felt like that, and, and I don't want to get into like a, you know, um, uh, I don't want to get into like a world where it's like, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm, it's a link, but I'm sure he just, uh, it's probably like the 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 Gamayan emoji or something. Oh, like I thought it was going to be like a Rickroll uh, YouTube video, like you've been Rickrolled. <laughs> uh, I want to set up a thing where it's like, there's two ways, not like minor things, but like there's two major ways that the, the campaign could go. Like, for example, imagine we're playing and the group ha has discovered that, you know, they're working for this mysterious benefactor. Now, this is all emergent. You know, this is not part of an adventure path. I may not know during route whether this mysterious benefactor is working for the Marquis de Cat or are they secretly an agent of the Woodland Alliance? Mm. What's the bird people? The Airy dynasties, yeah. you know. Like the, from Game of Thrones, the Airy? No, I, I know them as birds, okay. cats, and the Woodland Alliance. All right, well, that's fairly accurate. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I don't know if you saw, Stephen, somebody... Um, so wait, somebody made that their avatar yeah. in, in Utah. On YouTube. your last stream yeah. on Tuesday, they were tipping and they had, they had the avatar yeah. of Derek with the lemon um, in his mouth. <laughs> but what I like the idea of is let the chat vote or, or tip to whichever goal and let them decide whether this person is yep. who, who they're secretly allied yeah, so with. So not only do we not know, 
you don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and 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 the PBTA is already like a you don't know what's going to happen. But then there's like this third element of the chat sort of pushing a direction or navigating right. like uh, the direction that the campaign goes. So if you could show up on a night and you might have input on how this actually right. plays out. And that's it, pretty it, fun. It's not going to be like you have input over like oh what's beyond that door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what does that monster do next turn? Yeah, that's that's, that's be too hard to do. That's too hard to do. Maybe if yeah. we had a producer who was really on their shit and really knew the game and really knew the technology, yeah. we might be able to do that. Maybe we will someday. But like, I think what we can do with the chat is at least once or twice an adventure or procession, have the chat sort of give sort of their feedback over major plot elements. Yeah. And have them sort of be, you know, like we always say, like with, I, I say this with any game. Uh, yeah, Darth Gorlock, exactly. Chat as GME. That's kind of exactly, he means game master emulator. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so instead of just rolling randomly, and determining something, uh, like I might ordinarily do, like an oracle, I'd use an oracle, roll on a table. Yep. Hey, what's this character's motivation? I don't know, I'll roll and just, I'll play, I'll roll with the punches. Instead, I'd let the chat do it. And they can debate in the chat and talk that, about the different that'd ways. That actually be really you know, cool and like, if there was a debate, like the, the chat was actually debating, like and, that would be really fun. And what I described it to, I, I described this to Bob yesterday, who is, who is not played, um, who has not played the game Fiasco. But if not you, yet. Maybe we'll play at Origins. Oh, we'll, I'm bringing it to Origins. Okay, we'll play at Origins. Okay. But if you've played the original Fiasco, then you know that one of the two modes that you can play when it's your turn is um, you can set the stakes for the scene, mm -hmm. but you give the outcome decision to the other players at the table who aren't in the scene. And during the course of your playing of the scene, they will either push, they will kind of mutually, quietly, through nonverbal cues, come to a consensus about whether or not this scene ends positively for you yeah. and give you a white die or negatively for you and give you a black die. And that will also shape how the scene plays out. But it also will affect your die pool, which will affect you during the tilt and the aftermath for people who know fiasco rules. But I like the idea of letting the chat be those unengaged players, mm -hmm. and they're the ones kind of virtually picking the white die or the black die, yep. and they're really going to be able to, you know, push push into that. Um, it's not, it's, I mean, it sounds really cool. It sounds like very interactive. If I was watching a channel or watching someone do that, I, just the idea that I could, like, have a little vote is, like, really, really cool. Um, for, for someone saying, well, you forgot about the Vagabond. Well, no, because in the root TTRPG, everybody's a Vagabond. Yeah. In fact, in root TTRPG, you have to be one. Have to be one. Yeah. But, like, if you join a faction, you're actually out of the game. But um, um, the Vagabond, instead of one Vagabond, there's actually a party of Vagabonds. And if you've ever played Root the Board Game, which apparently some of our, a lot of our people apparently have. everyone has. <laughs> you, you know that one Vagabond is enough to potentially disrupt the entire Woodland Alliance, a Woodland War, and, you know, up, upset everything. So imagine what would happen if a group of Vagabonds were to somehow yeah, find a way to work together. Um, for what it's worth, um, the faction I like to play the most is the Vagabond. My second favorite is the Airy because it is like playing 4D chess. Um, I, I would say cats are my least favorite, but Woodland Alliance just bother me so much when I'm playing against them that I find that I can't play them mm -hmm. because I hate them so much. Because they're so annoying. Tell us how you really feel. Because there. sympathy is so such a pain in the ass. I hate giving them cards for outrage. It's just, even when you're beating them down, they somehow get stronger. I hate guerrilla tactics. It's like impossible to attack them. I like So they're very cool and powerful and they do their thing. I hate playing them because I hate them so much. So I hate the Woodland Alliance. Anyways, I mean that's it's a strong opinion there, Derek. Yeah, maybe maybe, we'll, maybe I'll bring Brute to Origins as well. Again, the the one that we really want to play <clears throat> is Oath. I'd like to play Fiasco. I think that'd be really fun. And then I just want to play some games with other people, like whatever games. I don't care if they're TTRPGs or board games. I mean, obviously you know I love board games, but I'll play anything. I really enjoy the groups, and I think some of the people like coming down would be pretty interesting to play with too. Yeah, well I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring our com my, my com bug out bag, which. It has a bunch of, you know, uh, kind of one uh, one session long adventures that I've printed out over the years. A lot, I've, I usually bring Dungeon World, World of Dungeons, which you got to play. Mm -hmm. I bring games like Lady Blackbird. I bring Shadow of Yesterday. I bring Lasers and Feelings. I bring Danger Patrol. I bring a lot of John Harper micro games. Um, and I usually have like this book, like I bring... Uh, I bring the Quiet Year, which is right here. 
for those of you who might know The Quiet Year. Um, this is a map drawing game. Oh, cool. We I love a, maps. We use a deck of cards and everybody, you put out a piece of paper or, you know, like, ideally, like, you know, almost like a, like a piece of poster, or not poster, what's it called? Uh, like foam board? No, like what are the things that they have, the easels and you rip off, you know. Is this like a sketch pad? Yeah, like a big sketch pad. Yeah. You know, like, but it's like yeah. the size of some. Anyways, you put that yeah. down and then every turn, it, when it's your turn, you'll draw a card and it'll ask you a question. And no matter how you answer it, you have to add something to the map. Mm. So each person draws onto the map. And when, when you're done, you have this kind of cool map, and then I usually get everybody to sign it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if, I, I, I think I, I mean, it's because I'm, I'm an architect, but the idea, I think, of the map, that sounds really fun. The the game that we played over at Matt's house, the Car... car Carcassonne. Carcassonne was awesome, because it's this map tile game and stuff like that. I think that's those are those kind of things that really uh, catch my eye. So right. I don't know. I, yeah, I've never heard, even heard of that game. Right. So, like, for example, let's say it's Bob's turn. Yeah. We draw this. <coughs> Now, the idea of The Quiet Year is it says it's a map game about community and struggle. And again, a little bit of it's like up in the air. The idea is it's like it's like post-apocalypse. But it doesn't necessarily mean that like everything's a desert radiated wasteland. Maybe everybody died from a disease or a virus. Like everything could look perfectly normal and beautiful. those movies. Right? <laughs> so the, the idea is, is that you're a small community of survivors after some sort of disaster and you have one quiet year to try to rebuild your community oh. before winter comes. And so like, this is a spring card. It says, spring, two of hearts. And it says, there's, a, there's, there's two options, Bob. There's a large body of water on the map. Where is it? What does it look like? Or, there's a giant man-made structure on the map. Where is it? Why is it abandoned? So you, being the person who drew the card, would get to choose either one of those questions. You get to answer it. And no matter what your answer is, you have to add something to the map. To like, draw the, the body of water. Draw the, the body whopper, or, or you could decide what the giant man-made structure is. Yeah. Even if the question doesn't ask you about a structure, you still have to draw something on the map. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Interesting. Like, what natural predators roam this area? Are you safe? You know, and so, you know, I might be like, um, yeah, there's this weird, I don't know, cyber tigers. Jeez, what year is this based on? We're making it up as oh, we go gosh. forward. Maybe this is 4,000 years in the future, and they're like, All right, you know, works it is. cybernetic tigers that were designed to hunt people down. Anyways, I, mean, I would very badly and crudely. Get the humies. I would very badly and crudely draw little cats on the, <laughs> on the map, because the idea is that it's like everything you talk about is like, is adding to the map. Interestingly too, by the way, this game was made by Avery Alder, who also made Monster Hearts. Um, she loved that game too. Which I do love that game, so. Um, no, Claude, that's exactly the point. We, we want people who draw like one-year-olds. That's, it's, it's not about creating a beautiful map, although I have seen beautiful maps get made by people who are actually legitimately good at art. I like my grid maps. I like my grids. So, usually you just use a, a, a free form. Yeah, a little so, sketch pad, a big sketch but, pad. Um, yeah. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to that. And you know, the other thing too is for you all here at home, it's like, we, I wanna play these games on the stream. You know, I like talking about games and I know that those are very popular. But I get frustrated sometimes because, like, I'm not a great writer. Okay. I know that, right? Um, like, even when I write, like, I've been a best man three times. Okay. And I was valedictorian. Oh, okay. Of high school. And I had to give speech and all those things. And, I mean, there's been other instances, too, but, Just like... imagine the whole okay. entire class is your dungeon party. All right. So, <laughs> the reason I bring this up is to say, the reason I bring this up is to say... I never wrote a speech. Who wrote your speeches? I, I did. Smith? No. <laughs> He's a good writer. No, I would just write a couple of bullet ideas. Oh, and like, you just roll with it. I just oh, go, okay. I go, I'm yeah, just gonna I'm just about. gonna fly off the cuff here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't wanna have like a okay. I don't I don't wanna read a script. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just not good at that. Um I'm, you, I'm, and you've heard me read a script. I, I've heard it's you read a script. Like, I am reading a script. It's so bad. So, <laughs> so bad. For me, um, when I'm talking about some of these concepts. A lot of times I'm like, I don't want to tell you, oh, I want to show you. Oh, okay, okay. And put so like, your, put your put your game where your mouth is, where words are. <laughs> um, and but you know, folks willing to make negative <laughs> decisions. Yeah, Casey's saying if you play Quiet Year with oh. people and they always go, oh, we found a cache of ammo and uh, enough food to get us through the next ten years. That's oh, what did you find? <laughs> oh, I found a bunch of rocket packs. Uh, I've, I found a bunch of electrified fence, enough to surround our entire community and protect us against any natural predators in the entire area. I see the first thing when you said that that 
that river pond thing, I was thinking it was a polluted pond. That was the first thing I thought. Oh, well, see, that's because a, that's interesting. You said it was post-apocalyptic. Yeah. I was like, well, it's a polluted pond, right? So, I mean, not everything has to be doom and gloom, but, but his, that's what I thought. Casey's point, pond. Is, yeah, yeah. Casey's point is like you, you want to try to make it interesting. Um, What's an INTJ? A Myers Briggs INTJ? Huh? No, I am not an INTJ. What is it? You don't. How do you not know? What I don't know what you're even saying to me right now. You just said more words than those words. Okay, I said it's a Myers Briggs. I don't. That all this doesn't mean anything to me. Myers hyphen Briggs. Yeah, it doesn't mean two, anything to me. Two psychologists who created a sixteen matrix pro, profile. The first one is I or E. Are you extroverted or? Are you oh, I know this. Uh, I don't know if I, I ever heard it called that, but I've done that that damn quiz online. Okay, so yeah, it's probably like some Buzzfeed thing I clicked on. <laughs> um, I can't remember what if I. I I'm definitely an E. I might be an ENTJ. Um, I think it's. I can't remember exactly. Thinking, judging. Um, oh, I agree uh, that uh, it, it's not uh, it's not the most it's not the most uh, scientifically rigorous process. But anyways, long story short, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, long story short, uh, I like to show people what I'm talking about, and sometimes I get frustrated because I feel like I'm telling people like an idea or a concept, and I can I can see that they don't get it. I think watching you GM has is it, again. Is, is probably better than just you telling me how to jam. Right. Yeah. But also, yeah. sometimes I do need my night school. Like, I need a little bit of a breakdown. And I did like having homework and then being critiqued on my homework. I thought that was actually really and, interesting. And, and people gave me shit because they said you were being too mean to Bob about his critique. Gosh. You should, and I'm see, like, you should see what he says to the other people's homework. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, you should, I gave critique to my patrons who, if you were a patron, you could also submit your dungeon and I would give you, a, you know, a, a, a feedback on it. And I was like, these people are paying me money. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I really like this. Yeah, I didn't like this. You know, or this might be fun for you, not my style, and I kind of think that this part could probably be better, right? You know, so yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not gonna fuck around. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so for me, you know, like I love being able to show um, a game like Dungeon World, and again, what, if I had the time, this is this is what I would love to do with tickets, Bob. Mm. You know, with our like, for those of you who don't know, we're we're introducing a ticket system which you earn each month and you can use those tickets to get cool merch from us. Those or stickers. You can get you could get these cool Northern Reaches stickers, this cool get fucked sticker. Um, but we're also gonna do t-shirts and dice and koozies and whole other stuff. But we also wanna do fun things that give people a chance to kind of work with me or Bob or Aaron um, and get kind of some more personal time with us. Obviously we can't do that for all 300 50 people ever, 315 people on our Patreon. Yeah, there's a lot of you. There are a lot of you, but what we want to be able to do is, you know, um, 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 you know, for people who are running a lot of games, thus earning a lot of tickets, or people who are a higher paying tier and thus getting a lot of tickets. Um, we want to be able to do this stuff. But one of the things I'd love to be able to do is to like play a game with like GMs and or, or, or even have like a game session that we play then, with that same group of people, go back and watch the film, watch the tape, yeah. and then like play by play it and like stop and be like, okay, do you see what I'm doing in that exact moment? Let's yeah. rewind it. See how I'm, see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm taking what the player wants, I figure out what they want, but now I'm gonna kind of twist it so that it's in opposition to what that character wants. And that's gonna create tension. And that means we're going to come to an interesting decision. Well, that sounds great for me, and I'm just here listening. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, so, like, that's 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 Jeez, that sounds awesome. Right. So, like, or like, uh, like you were saying with the World of Dungeons, where I'm like, okay, so you triggered it. You, you were able to flow with it so right. nicely, and that's that's something that I don't think I have yet. Um, but I think it's a learned skill just by doing it more often. Right. And, and I'll be, and again, I'm being honest with my audience here. I am not a good writer. I, I, uh, you know, that some of these people, like you know, John Harper and. Uh, you know, uh, Sage Latora and Avery Alder and, you know, uh, even our own Aaron Smith are much better at taking these ideas and thoughts and concepts and then distilling them down into words. Whereas for me, it's like I need to show through example yeah. and, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Roll for combat. Can't wait to have you write for me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, in fact, actually, I'll be completely honest with you. I carry around in my car a uh, a digital Recorder. Recorder. Yeah, I know. Because I talk to myself instead of write notes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because it's 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 just way easier for me to do that. Um, and so uh, one of the things I'd love to be able to do is like, it's hard sometimes for me to 
exactly distill down what advice I'm trying to give you. And what it's almost like, it's like, all right, I'm trying to teach you something, fuck it, all right, let's go play a game yep. for four hours. Then okay, then, then, I'll, then I'll record it, yeah. then we'll go back and watch it, and that way I could be like, okay, do you see what was happening yeah, right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to yeah. do. Bring out the whiteboard, like a Madden style, the big... Yeah, marker. oh yeah, 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 yeah. With, yeah. Be like, be like you, all right, you, he, he cut to the open, he yeah, cut yeah. to the open plot line. Yeah, and he, you see and, him break, he breaks yeah. through the tackle there. Great, great move. <laughs> right, you can see this player's trying to block by being a dick, they're trying to be a rules <laughs> lawyer, all right? You'll see what I did there, is I shoved, I blocked <laughs> them, I tackled them, pushed them out of the, I pushed them out of the, the zone, and that means I was able to keep the, the, the storyline going. I took a hero point away from him. Right. No, I think that's that a great idea. Didn't I take a hero point away from him? You did. <laughs> you didn't take away a hero, a hero point from me. You gave me, no, it was a half hero point. You gave me a half hero point, and you were like, you know what, Bob? That was all right. Like, you take a, take a half hero point, and then later on you were like, take that take that away. <laughs> take it's that gone. away. You were just too cowardly. <laughs> yeah, too um, bad. <laughs> because, you know, and I think this is something that a lot of people have learned, which is that, you know, these ideas that are in some of these indie RPGs, these so-called narrative RPGs, Okay, well, it's kind of a bullshit concept, right? Because uh, all of these games are, you know, designed to create some kind of story. At least we would hope so. Now, there are full, to be clear, there are fully elements. I mean, there, there are moments in Pathfinder 2nd Edition where I'm like, there is no story here. Yeah. This, is just, mean, this is just a war game. 4th Edition D&D can be the same way. I mean, any D&D. &D, yeah, that's fair. Any D&D &D game can really be yeah, that. Especially when you're reading an AP. <laughs> like, I mean, Bob, I mean, when we're, when you've got your map in front of you yes. or your foundry in front of you yes. and it's a combat and we're in initiative order, you know, spells are flying and like, you're not thinking about the story, the narrative, the role well, playing. you got to listen in directly. I was like, I'm going to move my character five feet and then I'm going to shoot and now I'm going to move my character ten feet and I'm going to shoot <laughs> like, or whatever I was doing. I mean, like, I'm like, it was so monotoned. It was not very flavorful. Like, it was, I was trying to, well, I, I also think I'm not even playing with too many people. Like, I'm, so I'm trying to like keep the pace going because it's it gets yeah. really grindy. Well, it's tough play too. Too many people. I don't know. It's also tough too because it's like, well, in the back of my mind, I'm like, we're already playing a, we're already playing a turn-based combat game yeah. in a D20 <laughs> system, that is very complex, right? Fourth edition, very complex. Pathfinder Second Edition, very complex. Yes. These are very complex D20 games. Um, so my turns are already going to take a long time, and that's if I say. All right, I am going to stride here. Okay, that's going to trigger an attack of opportunity. GM, make your roll. I'm going to use a reaction, so I have to meet this roll. Okay, that was my first action. Done. Yeah. Second action. I am going to use my um, whatever. You know, I'm going to okay. I'm going to cast this spell. I'm going to target this person, this person, and this person. Okay, need, make four saves. Okay, they succeeded, so they get this effect. They failed, they get this effect. They failed, they get the same effect. They critically failed. They have to make another save to determine. You know what I mean? And then it's like, what level are they? Okay, what level am I? Yeah. Is the incapacitation right? So that's with me. Bro. The moment I start, you know, what's funny. I did, that just reminded me of like when we were playing well, Domination Vaults, and you made me do Dungeon World. Like, you can't say Bob. I'm gonna stride. <laughs> you can't hit. You got. You got. You got to describe it to me. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to train Bob like, to get him ready to play a Powered by the Apocalypse in a root game. I was like, Bob, you can no longer describe <laughs> things using the mechanics. You have to describe them in the fiction, and you know, see what happens for that. But the point is, it's like when I start describing something. It's almost like I feel like I'm being a dick in Pathfinder Second Edition because I'm like, look, I, this, this already takes too long. I know. The last thing I want to do is really like, you know, chew on the scenery and, you know, make something cool and interesting because everybody else is like, okay, we got it. All right, you're so cool. Fuck, dude, I just want to go again. Okay? Please, for the love of God, hurry your fucking turn up. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> it can get it can get kind of slow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, we've been playing that three person AV abomination vaults, and it's been super nice. The, the turns don't take long. You can start to describe things a lot better. I think it's been nice. I mean, Boothby, Boothby knocked it out of the park here. He says, "All right, I'm gonna move five feet out of fear of following the footsteps of my mother, who strode." Ten feet in a fight, triggering an attack of opportunity that took her life, robbing us of her light. <laughs> My sister and I grew up orphans in the street because of that stride action, and I swore I would never stride into an attack of opportunity again. Nay, I look at the monster, <laughs> and I see that he is well armored and has both sword and shield. I think back to the fighters of my youth and think all fighters are born genetically with attack of opportunity, it cannot help. But what if they are not a fighter? What if they are barbarian? But what if they're sixth level? And what if they took attack of opportunity? And who wouldn't take attack of opportunity? Ah, <laughs> oh, you know, like I, we we don't we don't need all that. 
<laughs> I believe so I was going to write all that, but it's still a 200 character limit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I believe you. I believe you. Um, That's funny. So yeah. Um, so but, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much longer you want to go today, Mr. Derek. No, no, we're we're, we're going to wrap but up. But this was our hundred stream. So this is like the history of uh, me uh, growing. This is the history of KLC growing. Yep. But I think a lot of people might be wondering what is going to be happening next. Where is the growth going to go? We have the studio ready. What's yeah. happening next? What are we planning to do with stuff like this space? Yeah. I did, you, you had mentioned Root and stuff like that. Yeah. Are, what, well, what I mean, are we doing for you, the patrons, yeah. the, the YouTubers? Yeah. I mean, to be clear, I mean, if you're a subscriber and you've been a subscriber to us for a long time, you know, thank you so much for your support. Um, but I, I, you know, and I, and, and that means the world to me. If you've ever gone out of your way to throw a super chat or a tip our way, like and subscribe the video, like, <laughs> ooh, like and subscribe. But you know that you that is an, an extra level of of, of you know um, expression of care that really means a lot to us. But it's our patrons who have been with us through thick and thin, um, and you know that that is really the light blood of this sh this entire e endeavor. That's right, you guys. So you know certainly you know. Uh, <laughs> Step one, keep massaging the lighting and please don't burn money on new cameras. New cameras won't come, Vin, until the lighting is set up. Now, the good news, but Vin. some new cameras could help fix the lighting. That's true. <laughs> the good news is, is the light which is hitting Bob's backdrop right now. And again, I, it is too dark for me. I know you said you like it dark, but I, I want his light to be a little bit light brighter. But um, that light on Bob's background <laughs> is, uh, is only $35. So, like, I can buy, like... Eight of those, or ten of those, for three hundred fifty bucks, which is less than I spent on that light right there. What about torches? Um, that Donnie wants to know. Well, we have torches. <laughs> we do have. We're working on torches. Um, in fact, if you can see in Bob's shot, there's these two columns which flank him, kind of in the darkness. But I, I built these sort of pr fake prop torches. I built one as a demo. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. Um, and you know, I got to paint it up and stuff like that. But I got to make three more, and we're gonna mount those on those. So you know, we do have some arts and crafts time. Um, you know, yeah, it, it is. It is, it basically, it is an ever-burning torch mark. Um, but, you know, so we have some arts and crafts stuff, but that isn't as important as getting in here and providing content for you. Yeah. Now, the truth of the matter is, I would love to be able to, to do this three times a week. Yes. Because, you know, we're going to be playing games. Um, and, again, the, these new campaigns are going to be shorter. Yes. They're, they're we, only going to... We aren't going to try to do these 20-person or 20-session campaigns. I want to make them more digestible for you, the audience. Maybe we can actually be able to do different games. Derek can teach more games and more of this philosophy he's trying to do. We can have more fun with different characters and, and stuff like that, get to play around with more stuff. I think it's gonna be really fun. Yeah, so um, the fact of the matter is, I mean, the, the numbers don't lie. I mean, even Critical Role loses half of their audience by, you know, episode whatever, 10 or 20 or whatever. And they've got hundreds of thousands of people, right? Mm -hmm. We go from having like, 200 people for our session zero or session one, which is amazing. And by session three, we're down to 60. And then by session five, we're down to like 35. Yeah. And then by session eight, we're down to like 25. The fact of the matter is it's tough for people to stick with the show like this. Um, it's tough for new people to want to join a show that is 20 plus, 30 plus, 40 plus hours of backlog content. So we want to do these like sort of three, six, nine session games. And we're going to play them Boom, 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 boom. Like, we're going to play them in a row. Like, we're not going to play every other week. We're not going to play every other month. Like, we're just going to be like, this is the root game. It's going to run for, you know, there's not a set fixed rate. The target is six, plus or minus one, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, how things are going. And then move on from there. And then when root's finished, we'll probably take a small break and do some other content just to change up. And then, boom, we'll start another game. So, I mean, I I'd love to be able to do that. And still also do two live streams a week. Yes. Where I could talk about Pathfinder 2nd Edition yep. and talk about something else or to do like a GM or or us. We, we might be like or we night, might we night might all life, get together like and life. we might do a nightlife. Podcast. Right? We've talked about movie night. That's my baby. Where I'm going to come in here with the group and we're going to watch a movie that I've never seen before that I think is probably awful. That they're going to tell me how it's really good. And then we're going to critique that. And then you guys get to see that too. Yeah. So, um... You know, the, the basically, you know, the nice thing about it is the way that this is set up, I mean, I just, I, it takes me not that much longer to get this whole thing set up as it does my home setup. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, I come in, I, I turn on some lights, I turn on the cameras, I set up OBS. It's exactly the same process I do at home. 
you know, maybe with a couple extra cameras. But once it's set up, the studio space is used for nothing else. Like we can just rinse and repeat. So it becomes very easy. Bob and Aaron live nearby yep. um, and they can just come up here. So we really want to get more of these kind of group chats and yep. this kind of stuff. So and Booth 3 brings up a good point too about like, you know, you, you could run root for six sessions and then we could play some PF2 and then there's like some, maybe there's a little overlap then there's a break and then we play Avatar and then like, we, we do an RD20 and then you're like, you know what, I kind of want to get back to root, different PCs, we're gonna do a different campaign, but I want to get I want to get back into that, I felt really good. And you can really play with what the what, what the fans like, what the patrons like, what the players like, what you like as a GM, and then really find some like just fun grooves and, and, and fun seasons. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, Vin, the, this camera, is its exposure is set really low. In fact, actually the problem, oh, minor, minor Derek bitch bout point here. Um, <laughs> the problem is, that these cameras uh, are 4K HD, um, or I should say 4K Ultra HD um, Canon camcorders that uh, we feed through an HDMI out into a Blackmagic quad deck hyper deck, which then passes it into our computer. It's great. The problem with these cameras, and these cameras were a little over $1,000 a piece. The problem with these cameras is I cannot go full manual on them. They are not cinema cameras. I do not have full manual control of the aperture, the shutter, or the ISO. So as a result of that, I have to be in auto mode in to a certain degree, aperture priority, shutter priority, whatever. And so I don't have full control over the settings on these cameras. And as a person who actually knows what I'm doing, it is very, very frustrating. Exactly, Sean, I cannot crank the ISO. The other problem, Sean, is that the form factor size of these sensors, like your camera on your phone, those sensors are very, very, very small. And a small sensor needs a lot of light in order to be able to properly expose an image. A larger sensor, literally like a bigger chip inside of the camera um, that, that is basically absorbing the light and acting as the photo photovoltaic cell, uh, obviously absorbs more light. So uh, a, a different cameras, better cameras, would have bigger sensors, which means not only would the image quality be higher, but it means we would have more sensitivity to light, which means we wouldn't have to crank the lights up so brightly just to even get a dark image <laughs> on the screen, right? We, we, we could have our lights set a little bit cooler, which is nice so it doesn't get as hot in here. There's a lot of advantages. Yeah, right? and uh, Darth, I agree with you. I don't know what he says half the time, but this is what I was talking about. Like, I started learning how to GM, but I also learned woodworking and photography at the same time, <laughs> like uh, just by being with Derek. And to Claude's point about the Call of Cthulhu vibe, yeah, you can really kind of tone it up. But also, the lights behind me, the lights behind Derek, and the lights behind each of the windows, they can all be color changed. So. Uh, we can go with like a red, like if it's like combat, and we can get really, really spooky. We can like t uh, change the lighting there, up, there, so, there you, right? There you go, Claude. Yes, yes. <laughs> now we're fun. now we're on. <laughs> this is this light on fifty percent power, um, and so you know we can we can uh, you know this is we we can play around with the lighting. But of course, the issue here is like with anything with fall off and all this other stuff is we need to make sure that the. Uh, the talent, that's us, is lit properly, mm -hmm. but we also don't want the background to be too ex illuminated and too bright. Even though we spend a lot of time on it and we think it's really, really cool, it should still be in the background. Okay. I actually really like your background in this shot. I, I, a little bit brighter? Uh, I would want a lot of it brighter. Uh, not a lot of it. I want I'm, I'm telling you, a little, a little goes a long way. I want you to be the main focus, and so we're going to be working on some different options to, to try to get you to I see, I like that. the way your background looks. Yeah, see, I, I think that's... No, I think that was great. No, I, mine mine is overexposed. No way. Looks yeah, mine's great. overexposed. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Orpheus says we'll be shooting on a red next. Exactly. If, if I could actually, Orpheus, you can look it up. The camera I want is a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Which, by the way, I, I, people are always like, "Oh, Derek, you're copying." Turns out that is what Critical Role used for their before they became mega big. Um, Critical Role used Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4Ks. Um, I would love to get Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4Ks. Also. Uh, we have a Blackmagic HyperDeck as our input to our OBS. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4Ks would work with that very, you know, completely natively. Um, and so it, it would, you know, be awesome. And I think the Blackmagic, I'd love to learn DaVinci Resolve uh, as well and get out of Premiere Pro potentially. Um, and yeah, like, uh, so I really want to get Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4Ks. Now, Vin said, are, what's the resale value on these cameras? The good news is the resale value on these cameras, I think is about 750 give or take. We paid probably a shade over a thousand and they're a couple years old now. I could probably get 750 for them, I feel. 
the cameras I want to get are $1,000. So it's only a $250 difference. But then I got to buy a lens, mm. but I don't have to buy the best lens in the world. So I'm probably looking at like 1300 per new camera, which minus the 750 means I'm paying about 500 per camera to upgrade. But we only have three main cameras now, That's so right. it's only 1500 bucks. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever. I mean, it is. I mean, again, these are the things, you know, someone, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't try to bring people down with this, but it's like, how do I say this nicely? Other channels don't put in the work that you do? Yeah. I like something like that. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, that that's that's what I was trying to say. Thank you, Bob. But it's like... <laughs> Bring uh, back Wheel of Pain 2.0, you could buy anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, the, 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 like, the amount of stuff that I've had to buy and of spend with my own money just to get to like, the level of quality that I want and the things that I've had to learn, like the stuff that we talk about and we worry about. Look, the first episode of Sandpoint, you can watch, that was Bob saying, Derek, don't worry about anything, just turn on the camera and we're good to go. And Derek the whole time cringing as he's probably videotaping this, like, I just need better camera, lighting, everything. But I, I, I put it on the camera. Every time somebody watches that first episode, I, 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 sh I shudder. <laughs> um, because I'm like, don't. Shudder, da -dun -dun. Da -dun -dun. yeah, yes. I shudder. Speed. Um, so yeah, like, uh, now granted, you're, you're absolutely right, Satir. By being a patron, by being a supporter of the channel through our YouTube Adventurer program, by super chatting, by even using our drive through RPG link or our Amazon affiliate link, um, you help us maintain this so I don't go bankrupt. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I, I think there's more to being a YouTube channel than just turning a camera on in your bedroom. So, you know, I, I think having this, I think having a professional, you know, if you're going to, if you expect to be treated like a professional, then you should act professionally. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. That's a fair point. Um, ben says, those first episodes are still some of my favorite. But it, because of... At what point, when I was getting super hammered when the bottles of beer were stacking up next to me? Like, what point was it? Is it, is it, is it because of the... It, I mean, we were getting pretty loose. Is it... Beer be of the Week was like, like, drink the whole... Pack of beers. Um, so. What the? Oh, Texan. Oh, Texan. Wow. Yeah. $100 for the hundredth. Look at Bob shaking his shoulders. <laughs> Thanks for always giving us awesome content every week. Super excited for Root. Well, that Texan, thank you so very much. Um, Texan's actually one of our oldest supporters. I was actually just looking. He uh, signed up for Northern Reaches this year. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, and so super, super, super appreciative. I'd love to see the bread super chats. Um, everybody's come out today and support us and you guys are just incredible, amazing. Thank you very, very much, Texan. That is very, very generous and yeah, appreciate the $100 for honor. That is awesome. Uh, definitely will help recoup the uh, unbelievable amount of money I just spent to get shirts made. Um, <laughs> our shirts are so expensive. Good shirts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We spared no expense. I mean, yeah, I mean, the shirts I made that you guys saw a while ago were just like a cheap online one. We were just trying to see if we could we could get a shirt company that would just like, we could just put it in and you guys could like just pay and it would ship to you and no big deal. The quality of the shirt was okay. It was better than nothing, but the printing quality was actually kind of poor. Well, basically yeah. it, what it was is, I because I, the printer we weren't with had this option, which is the, it's basically like a inkjet printer. Mm -hmm. It just prints like it's like a printer head yeah. that just goes and print, so it's literally just spraying ink onto the surface of the shirt. The shirts that we're getting made are actually being screen printed. Yeah, that's, those are much better. They're actually being like, Way better. you know, with the, and they need to make five, they, that's why one of the reasons they're like. Are the shirts available as merch? Well, Brutus the Cat, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, Brutus, the answer is, all, we don't wanna, we don't wanna sell items and it's kinda weird and there's sales tax and all this other stuff. So what is gonna happen is when the shirts, when we get them, is you are going to be able to use your Knights of Last Call tickets, which you are going to get uh, at Champion, Hero, and higher tiers. You also get tickets by running games. <coughs> um, and you can use those tickets to do stuff in Northern Reaches. You can use tickets to maybe get into some of our other stuff, uh, special events, but you can also use those tickets to buy the merch. Um, now, to be perfectly blunt and perfectly honest, um, you know, if you're a night $5 member and you're running games, 
you know, getting several hundred tickets is going to be a, a lengthy endeavor. If you're a champion, you only get a handful of tickets each month, so it could take you a while to get up to be able to get something like a set of dice or something like that. The shirts, and we don't have 300 shirts. We have 300 patrons, we don't have 300 shirts. So it is kind of a first come, first serve, and to typically the, the higher end merch items are going to be more for, you know, our uh, champions who are also running a bunch of games or our heroes, or we're gonna be introducing a new set of tiers that are above hero, basically so that they get more tickets, so they get more cooler merch. Um, and that's kind of where that comes from, so. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is a great question. Yeah, but, uh, absolutely. That, Brutus, but uh, but thank, thank you again, Texan. That was a very, very generous. Uh, yeah, I really, we really appreciate that. Thank I don't, you so I, much. We don't get them that big that often. Hey-o. Hey-o. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> He <laughs> said Texas goes big. So, again, thank you, everybody. By the way, we had a fantastic week. We, we hung out with Donnie yesterday. Yes. One of our dearest, oldest patrons, well, we friends. Q&A on Monday. We had a Q, yeah. So, this has been, you know. well, Sunday, we finished Descent, eight-session eight, eight campaign that lasted about four months. It took us to run eight sessions. I was right. Overlord. And Derek uh, was a Derek heck skipped, of a barbarian. Derek, Bob was running, Bob's running this Descent game. It was supposed to take two months and change. Yes. So it's only nine sessions, eight yes. sessions. Yeah. But his brother is going to college, is leaving. Yep. And he's like, Derek, we have to finish. And I'm like, Bob, I have, I have a Paramore concert that night. And Bob's <laughs> like, it's the only time we can play before Danny goes to co off to college. And I go, fine, Bob. I'll cancel my Paramore concert. Such a nice guy. Uh, and I won't go to, you know, section 102, center, row five, center, um, that I paid $185 for. You chose, to, you chose uh, game boards and I, I, I chose I chose games with friends. Um, but that was Sunday. Monday was the Q&A. Tuesday, you go live. Wednesday, Donnie's in. Thursday is GM Scott ran by real yep. quick. And then, uh, so two patrons in two days. And we're doing this today. Friday, we got our, uh, our stream. And then I don't know what you're doing this weekend. Sleeping, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, so I have been... Um, <laughs> Sutter, this is, he was looking forward to that Paramore concert for ages. He talked about it in the Discord. Actually, I will, quick, real, quick little short story time. I bought those tickets a year ago, last summer, when they announced that they were going to be going on tour, North American tour 2023. And I bought that, and I knew they were working on a new album, but I didn't, no one knew anything about it yet. And so I was like, oh, cool. Like, maybe there'll be a new album, maybe they won't be, but, you know, it'll be fine. It'll be awesome. They dropped the new album at the beginning of this year, and it's not good. Like, actively not good. Like, I don't like listening to it. Like, it, it's not like, oh, it's past. It's like, no, it's horrible. So I didn't like it. And so when, the, when they started the tour, this was, Cleveland was going to be like the 23rd concert of the tour. And I looked at their set list. There's a website that tracks their set list. And I was like, they are playing no songs from the first two albums, which are my favorite albums. They're playing a handful of songs from the third album, and they are playing a shitload of songs from their brand new album, which I don't like. So I was like, this is an easy decision to make. You know, uh, my time is more valuable than my money. Plus, I spent that money a year ago. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. I but worked out. But it was a real busy week for you. I mean, yeah. geez Louise. But it was fun, and we got to see so many people. And yes, yeah, so we got to see GM Scott and today. Was coming up. We, yeah, we got to see GM Scott today. We got to see Donnie yesterday. We're gonna go to Origins here in less. It's two weeks. In two weeks, basically, two weeks, exactly, two weeks. Two weeks. exactly two weeks. Exactly two weeks. We're gonna be trying to go live from Origins, so yeah. that is gonna be pretty crazy. I, I, listen, if I can go live from a boat, yeah, I feel like you in should, the middle yeah, of the yeah, fucking you ocean, go live at, at Origins. Uh, sure. I should definitely be able to go live from Origins. <laughs> yeah. Well, but maybe when we're at Origins, not at the bar, getting hammered afterwards. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll try to figure it out. You know, la last year we were there, it was a little tough because they still had mask mandates. Yep. And so, like inside, it was really hard to be on a microphone with the mask, and you know, it was, and we it, did the podcast in the hotel. We did a lobby. podcast in the hotel lobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they and, wouldn't give us a conference room that was empty. <laughs> yeah, they would. So we had to just sit there in the lobby next to the street. But you know what? It was fun. It was people gave giving us looks like, "What's that going on? Those guys must be important." <laughs> Um, RFC asked you asked where you're going to take him for dinner at Origin. No, what a, no we we Is told him he the millionaire. Yeah, we, we we told him we told him that North Market's the best place. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we're we're happy to grab. Look, we're dinner. going to Hofbra House. Because we're, we are that going, place is legit. We are gonna go to Hofbra probably Thursday night. Oh, so good. Yeah, because um, rever reverse. reverse slalom has to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Friday, yep. so he's free Thursday. So. Yeah, that'll be fun. So we do Hofbra House Thursday night, and. And drinks there, and then that's be good for me because then I can just roll over to my the place I'm staying, which is right next to the Hofbrauhaus. There you go, perfect. So, all right, well, Bob, uh, 
Any final thoughts before uh, we send us out? No, I uh, uh, not not. I guess yes, I do actually have thoughts. Um, uh, one being, uh, you know, coming from playing Magic and thinking D and D was like something that I would never be interested in. I really have had fun the past two and a half years. I really have had a great time playing games, playing these different TTRPGs and board games too. But uh, with this group of people, with with Derek and Smith and and the other our other members and crew people, uh, having fun with you guys, the patrons playing different games with you, I grown as you guys have heard throughout this conversation but um just just having a lot of fun i i, I kind of actually really enjoy like friday nights going to like see where my character's gonna go where the where's this mission gonna go where's this sorry campaign gonna go uh <laughs> abomination falls like where's that where are we gonna go with this where's l5r going uh i'm excited to play root like in the studio like i i you know it's it's kind of uh fun to say but it's like not many people get to like play games and like in a space like this and uh, with their friends and then sort of also do it for everyone else and they all seem to somehow enjoy what we talk about. So it's been a lot of fun. I've been having a good time. Yeah, and you know, also too, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there, I'll, I'll add this, which is, um, you know, uh, we, we're still spending a lot of money on lights and additional microphones and maybe, maybe some cameras, who knows. But the point is, you all have continued to support us and the amount that we have to buy has gone down considerably too. And so one of the things that's been really great too is, you know, I've been able to start paying, you know, uh, some of some of my employees, uh, you know, some some dividends from the hard work that they put in every single day here on this channel. Um, you know, and I know that Bob, you, you've been getting into Warhammer 40K in a big yeah. way. And it seems to be expensive. It's a very expensive hobby. Um, it's only a matter of time before this our secondary room over here becomes a, a printer, a resident printer store. Yeah. Um, I was trying to think of how that's going to work. Oh, dude, I was looking. I was watching. I was watching some YouTube videos on resin printing the other day. I just, I'm just thinking, like in general, like setting up and then letting it run and then like coming back. Like, no, I don't. Such I, a far I mean, it, me. it was just. A, a I mean, I'm job. probably going to get a printer soon. It's right. probably going to be. I just didn't know if you wanted a resin printer in your house with your kids. It will be up on a shelf. Because it's like and super toxic, right? Yeah, yeah, but I have a, a window right by my office. I'll just vent it right out. And then the new vents, they're pretty good, too. Uh, Brutus wants to know what army you're running. He was thinking of starting Tau. No, that's Kaz the Tau guy. Okay, for starters, listen, nobody nobody who wants to make friends is ever going to run Tau. Yeah. First of all, what army do you think I'm running? Because that will already answer your question. Sean uh, says, set up a webcam. That's how my dad does it with his resin printer. So get that, like... That's actually what people Get like do. a webcam. Yeah, that's... So they know when it's finished. Yeah, like get like a wise like, like, like and, and then yeah. just point it at it. That's pretty uh, smart. Sp uh, Vin had a question that said, do you think Bob has grown better at his descriptions? And I know you recorded me reading some I will, RPG Vin, stuff. I will post to the YouTube, I will post to the Patreon. Um, I recorded Bob on my phone reading, reading a description <laughs> from our recent Descent game. And it was brutal. The Brigand Brigade. The Brigands. <laughs> There's a lot of Brigands. What's a Brigand? Um... <laughs> And uh, so, in terms of that, reading, no. Um, in terms of being able, <laughs> in terms of describing, I will say this. I thought in our Legend of the Five Rings session, last Legend of the Five Rings session, you did a, a, a very reasonable job of describing your actions in a way that felt, you know, because again, that's, there's not, you can't be like, I spirit summon attack. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. not like an option that you can have. You know? Yeah, you have to really get into it. It's like, okay, I have this mechanical feat that lets me do something. So what am I going to do with this? Okay, well, Derek, this is what I want to do. I'm going to perform this ritual at night. And I'm going to hopefully send the spirits over and do this. I'm like, okay, well, I'm actually getting into that description right. there. You know, it's pretty yeah. good. So yeah, it's, it's very, very good. <laughs> it would be very reasonable. High praise indeed. Uh, but um, before we get too far, I play orcs and Votan. So that's the two uh, right. people I play in Warhammer. And Texan, by the way, also shouted out. Uh, the uh, I think he said like the the phaser phase on 8K or something like that. Uh, fro frozen or frozen or, or whatever frozen. it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he said world leaders. I like I can respect chaos space marines. I mean, has Derek gotten better about teaching you new things? I don't want new things. It's been a while since we've done a nightlife. It, it, it's hard to also say new because then like in the nightlife we were learning really about Pathfinder and 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 like D and D D twenty type stuff, but like in L five R, you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm not being, I'm sort of being forced, but you will also be like, all right, Bob, like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, what are you doing? Like, right. don't just tell, tell, what are you, what are you doing? Right. And so I have to be better about descriptions and, and better about some of the stuff. So that, to that point, I guess he is teaching me to sort of uh, get out of my comfort zone a little bit and have a little fun with stuff. Um, but I mean, I'm sure you always teach me I, most random stuff too. <laughs> I try. And if not that, it, about woodworking yeah, or yeah. Uh, things like that. But you know, like you've been, you've been starting to teach me things about like painting. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which Just is pretty sweet. It's like, coming. and I, I, I'm almost. I wish I had time. I, yeah. I mean, I these if, new, if these new, the these no, coming. these new contrast paints are so so good, so cool. So good. I haven't painted with them. Yeah, I, actually, that's not true. Dirt had some, and I, I painted with them on them up at a, at a shop, and I would yeah. you know just mess around them with it too. He, on, on a Zenithil. Yeah. He and I was like, them. oh my god. Yeah. Like this is so easy. Oh yeah, it's so nice. I mean, it comes out real nice. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm gonna get the new one, the 2.0 for Ari Painter, and then you'll come over and paint some stuff. So that, that, I, have, I have a lot of stuff that needs painted. <laughs> I, yeah, really, you, I really kind of went all out. You've been kind of. Going to little between, too, between little the stuff hard. from Kickstarter and then Nick has a 3D printer. Uh, Nick that's been on the channel and he's been printing me a lot of stuff. And if yeah. you if you guys are in our art channel within our patron, you've seen seen some of the stuff he's printing. Printing me a bunch of these like forts. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. uh, yeah. I mean, look, I like toys too. I like theater of the mind. So do my kids. That's why it's fun. That's why that's why my wife can't get too mad yeah. when she's like, "What do you keep doing this stuff?" And I'm like. Hey son, come play with me. <laughs> right, right. Because that, that's the difference. Like, don't get me wrong. I like toys in my role playing games, but I mean, you're talking to someone who used to have four, five, six thousand points of high elves. This is in pre Age of Sigmar Warhammer, so Warhammer Fantasy, true, true Warhammer, as they call it. Um, <laughs> I had uh, five or six thousand points of, of high elves. I had probably four or five thousand points of dwarves. I had three or four thousand points of orcs. Um, so I had. Uh, I had a lot of Warhammer miniatures, so I like plastic. I like figures, um, and you know we used to build terrain and stuff like that. And now, like you've got those cool uh, printed battle mats, you know, yeah. that have like the texture like yeah. printed onto it, and it's like a mouse material. Yeah. So that's like so cool and so. I was thinking about getting one of those for my yeah. my table. But yeah, um, and by the way, for forty k, I I played the Smurfs. Okay, I played Ultramarines, but. You know, I know it's not it's not exciting, it's not sexy, it's not cool. I have ultramarines for my son. He but thinks they're cool. He thinks the them we, and the um, Necrons are pretty cool. Yeah, so. so I like them. But all right, we that is a hundred stream. That is uh, <laughs> Necrons for the win. Necrons are cool. I, I actually played against Necrons a lot, yeah. and it's brutal. Those Goss rifles are no joke, and their ability to come back is a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Tenth edition huh. comes pre order this weekend, and that's what I'll be. Putting some money into, I assume. Yeah, I, I watched um, uh, the for, uh, 40K in 40 Minutes yeah, yeah. channel. From Play, uh, on, Play on, on Tabletop. tabletop. They're, they're a good channel. They just did a, um, they just did like a 10th a, a edition preview. Of the Leviathan box? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the Leviathan box is what's coming out this, well, pre-order this weekend. Is it Nids and... It's 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 uh Tyranids and Marines. Tids and Nids and Marines. Yeah, yeah that, but that, it's a ton of. But this one, th then this must have been the Leviathan box because it was Nids. A ton of units. It was Nids and Marines. And um, you get the book, the rules. I think there's cards, and you get two like big armies. Like this isn't like a little tiny army. These are huge armies. Yeah. Um, so thank you everybody for uh, for 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 your contributions. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your well wishes. We look forward to seeing you all. In the Patreon, if you're not a member, maybe consider joining patreon.com slash knights of last call. Um, everybody have a fantastic day. And if we don't talk to you, if we don't hear you, have a great weekend. Um, be safe out there. Have fun gaming. And uh, we'll see you next time on Knights of Last Call. Peace out, everybody.